And we are going free. Let me know if you all can hear me. I see Laurel in the chat. Good to see you. There's Justin, just a guy is here. Ryan Manley is here. There's Raymond. Scott is here. Arnorian is here. Zendrofen, Sifu, great to see you all. I saw Eternalism is here. Seaver, hello, good to see you. Phoenix Fire, it's great to see you. Jack White. Babe is here. Yeehaw. Yes, indeed. Yeehaw. Actually, I can do a fabulous yeehaw. I haven't done one in some years, though. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me okay? Justin says, I hear you. Thanks so much for letting me know. Today has been a, oh gosh, every day seems to be busy. And it seems like it gets busier by the minute. Been juggling a lot of things today, trying to get that uh, premiere out a little earlier that a number of you were with me uh, earlier and watched that uh, premiere uh, of the video for my book, It's a Comedy, Damn It, which if you all were not present, this is the book that uh, we I made a video of. And if you pop on over on my channel, No White Guilt, you will be able to find this video and in the description you will see the link to purchase this video. It is in print and electronic form. So it's a little bit easier to obtain. Uh, it is indeed a comedy. So you can, uh, you can catch that uh, video. It's not terribly long if you wanted to have a look at it here at the beginning of Going Free. But also, of course, if you would please uh, ladies and gentlemen, please tweet and gab and post to Facebook and Canod and Parler, VK, anywhere that you are on the internet. Let folks know that we are going free. We're going to share some very interesting information uh, today talking about the core of manhood. This is really important issue to talk about because of uh, how much of a misunderstanding there is about what is and what is not manhood, what it means to be masculine today. I have watched over the years, to my chagrin, many attempt to answer this question and fail in many ways to do so. There is a root, there is a kernel to this, and I haven't, uh, I haven't addressed it before, so I feel I will touch upon it today, and uh, we, will, we will make some sense of it. And I think there is a, the dichotomy between male and female for our people, we're going down some roads that are potentially uh, deleterious for us if we if we adopt notions that it's sort of like when you are target shooting and if your target is only five feet in front of you you can be off a little bit and you're still going to hit your target of course depending upon the width of your target but no matter how wide your target is, if the further your target is away, the smaller of an error you have to make at the point at where the, the projectile exits the barrel for that error to amplify itself downrange. So a tiny error here at the barrel ends up being a 20 foot error, 200 feet downrange, if that makes sense for those who, who don't shoot bow and arrow or crossbow or firearm. Uh, so there are some important things that we need to understand about what it means to be a man. And, and perhaps these should be things that we just, we adopt and think about regularly when it comes to being a, a man, a, a member of Western kind and a woman uh, in Western kind. So let's see what you all are saying. Well, hopefully you all are tweeting this out and gabbing this out as to many people as possible. It is a good Sunday to you all and good Monday to some of you who are ahead of us on planet Earth. Uh, I want to get the this info out to as many people as possible because we have to help people go free. It's critical. Uh, now, more than ever, as the anti-whites are censoring us, shutting our voices down, cutting our tongues out everywhere we turn, for the obvious reason that if they allow our people, our brothers and sisters out there to hear the message of redemption that we are sharing here in, in going free, uh, that the anti-whites will lose control over those people. And if they lose control over their thoughts, they lose control over their actions. 
Johnny Size says the video that I made for It's a Comedy Damn It was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, Raymond says he, uh, he missed it. But uh, Stig said, love the intro. I guess that's for the video I made. Thank you very much. Uh, Joel says, hail, hail in return. Joel, good to see you. Uh, Patrick Henry says, hello, brother. Well, a big hello to you as well. Let's see what everybody else saying here. Others saying that they can hear me. Thank you so much for letting me know that the audio is coming through. We are broadcasting to many platforms and we're going to add one right now. And that is Entropy. If all goes well, Entropy will be up. And then I think this will put us on 10 platforms simultaneously, ladies and gentlemen, 10 platforms. When the anti-whites endeavor to shut down no white guilt, I now have expanded to 10 platforms. And so this is the result. This is what they get for endeavoring to silence me when I reach out to the masses of my people to help them to redeem them, to bring them back into the fold of, of white well-being, a love for our people and our heritage, a love for our children and their destiny, the lives that they will lead. And so there we have it. You should be able to find me now also on Entropy, which the, uh, the link for the Entropy site is down in the description. As is the case, you can over on No White Guilt channel, Super Chat right here on YouTube. Uh, and uh, that's at 33%. If you'd like, you can Super Chat over on Entropy at 15%. At the moment, I'm the only one on Entropy. Let me know if anyone else jumps on there. If Let me know if it's working. It appears that someone has joined me. I'm not totally alone. Uh, so let me know if uh, if it's working fine. If you super chat over there, as I say, it's 15%. Uh, and as opposed to Google's 33%, you can also ask questions. There's a specific widget there for asking questions. And you can vote on questions. Presumably, I guess you can vote upvote your own. Uh, but you can also upvote the questions of others uh, to elevate them in the widget and make them more likely, make it more likely that I will answer them. You can also, of course, watch the stream over there on Entropy. You don't have to jump back and forth. If I post polls, they, they will be over there on Entropy. And I believe you still have access. I believe I've left the widget on there for the, the pulse meter that the good folks at Entropy have provided to let us know whether or not you are enjoying or loving or laughing at the stream. So it looks like some others are joining me now on Entropy. It's great to see you. A big hello to everyone who is watching on any of the numerous other platforms that we are broadcasting to right now. I know we have, I have a, I decided to put up a list over here because there are, is a growing number of platforms that I am on. So I know there are people watching, actually, actually I can see on the monitor right immediately, 90 degrees to where, from where I'm sitting. I can see there are people watching on Twitch right now, uh, on uh, D Live watching, Periscope watching, Minds watching, a couple others. Great to see you there. I see that there are folks watching on Gardening with NWG. It's great to see you all. Thank you all for joining us. I won't be able to see your chat though during the show. In the future, I will be able to see your chat because I will be getting a, I guess it will be a, well, I'm going to get rid of one. So it might be five monitors will be total in the end. And I'll be able to see your chat, though I won't be participating in the chat uh, on the gardening with NWG dur during going free streams. I will at least be able to see what you all are saying and I'll be able to comment on it while we are talking here uh, during the show. Uh, but as I say today, that is not an option. I cannot see if the comments you post over there so if you do want to make a comment and you want to tag me, tag me as No White Guilt over on the No White Guilt live stream. That is where I will be able to see you. And uh, mods, if you see people, if you jump over uh, to the gardening with NWG live chat and you see people trying to reach out to me there in frustration, let them know that 
they'll have to jump over to the uh, this channel and this live chat to be able to reach me and tag me properly. And I will respond to them to the best of my ability. Again, in the future, I will be able to see them on yet another monitor probably placed up there. I'm probably going to die of radiation poisoning surrounded by all of these monitors. It does keep it warm in here. So you will occasionally hear me, uh, the AC running, which should be understandable, all of the computers and monitors. I see racial consciousness is here. So the stars are showing up tonight. You know what really surprised me? was during the premiere of the uh, the video I did for It's a Comedy, Damn It, uh, a book that I wrote. It is actually comedy. So we are more than, than the two-dimensional characters that the anti-whites paint us to be in the anti-white narrative. In the anti-white narrative, we are nothing more than these uh, monsters that are these flat characters without emotion, without feelings, without the ability to, to feel hurt, without the ability to shed tears, we are dehumanized. And uh, the, the purpose of that is quite clear. You have to dehumanize a group before you can exploit them, before you can punch them and say that it's okay to punch this group, before you can kill them, you have to dehumanize them. And we are in fact, uh, men and women and children of all ages, who care about the well-being of our people, and we endeavor to secure that well-being specifically for our children. And so this is, uh, as I say, available. You can find the link for It's a Comedy, Damn It, uh, over on uh, the video and in, in the description that I did. I premiered just a little bit over an hour ago, and thank you all for showing up. But I do want to say, I saw in Tina from... Uh, the uh, Ramsey Paul and Tina's Happy Homeland show was in the chat. I, I was very surprised to see her. Wonderful to have seen you there. I don't know if you're with us right now or not, Tina, but it was a moment where the stars were definitely coming out. Uh, so thank you for being there. We had a good crowd uh, over there during the premiere, and a lot of people liked the video. I had a lot of fun making the video, and I had a uh, lot of fun writing the book. I hope you all get a great laugh out of it. So as I say, race, the great racial consciousness is here, the Twitter Titan. Uh, I mentioned Phoenix Fire is here. She was here with us earlier. Sterling Price is here. Uh, can asks, can you still see your tag without the at? Uh, I, I, well, Sterling, you, I see right after that message, you put no white guilt and I can see it. It's, it's orange. Did you use the tag or not? Um, that would be interesting. It did come up orange for me. Uh, there's Andre is here. Uh, I think I think I did say hello to you, uh, Seaver. I definitely did earlier. Seaver was with us as well. Um, the great Spartan warrior queen was with us during the premiere uh, video of It's a Comedy, Damn It. Sean Alexander, hello to you. Great to see you back. Sifu was there with us as well. Great to see you. Of course, Zandrofen was was there. Yes, we had a great time. Ladies and gentlemen, if you missed it, you really missed out. Uh, so let me say, yeah, we were having a great party, but of course you can still find that video on my channel, uh, No White Guilt. And because the governments of Europe will be making that video inaccessible to the populations in uh, the majority of European countries, I will be, uh, what, do you, what do you call this? Mirroring it, I think it is on gardening with NWG and on discipline with NWG. So you will also you will also be able to see those videos there, I hope, by way of mirroring. If they are still inaccessible by way of mirroring, and perhaps someone in the chat can let me know whether or not uh, my assumption is correct or incorrect, if there is a problem, then I will make some changes and the video will go up on one or both of those channels as well. Uh, I want folks to be able to have access to it. That's actually an interesting thing, an interesting test that we could do. Are videos that are banned from, that are banned by European governments in European countries coming from one channel, are they, are they inaccessible if they are mirrored on another channel? Probably so, but I'm not sure. You are able to obtain uh, the It's a Comedy, Damn It, electronically, so it'll make things a little bit easier for you. I see some questions about that. You don't have to get it in 
uh, printed version. I will make these available on No White Guilt Collectibles, uh, a, a creation, a store created twice by our lovely and wonderful, industrious Phoenix Fire. God bless her. The anti-whites thought they were really doing something special when they got the, the store shut down, obliterated. And uh, then within a day, Phoenix Fire rebuilt the entire thing and put all of, uh, made all of the anti-whites work a vain attempt to silence us. And in fact, we are growing in our voice, growing on platforms. So yeah, big hello to everyone who's on all of those other platforms as well. And a big hello to everyone who is watching this in replay. Uh, thank you for being here with us. So another red shirt says, great topic. Yes, this, the topic about the core of manhood is extraordinarily important. And if I'm, I, I believe that what I'm going to share today is novel. If it is, if it is not novel, if someone else has been saying the exact same thing, feel free to, to let me know. Um, in fact, it would be better if somebody has already thought this out and I could just look at their work uh, and uh, we could use what they have written and what they have spoken to. There's Joel. Great to see you, Joel. I think, Joel, you were with us earlier uh, at, the, at the party for the premiere, weren't you? So let's see. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want me to, to see your questions or statements, the first thing you can do is you can tag me in the live stream on No White Guilt. Tag me as No White Guilt. If you tag me as Gardening with NWG, it doesn't show up on this particular chat, on that monitor. As I say, I will be getting another monitor, but it doesn't show up here in a way that uh, I can, it's going to be orange. So it's not going to jump out at me. Tag me as No White Guilt. Everyone who super chats on any of the platforms will have their comments or, or, or questions read on YouTube. It's 33% on entropy. It is 15%. And on the familiar alternative, it is 4%. You can dive down into the description to find the familiar alternative and you can super chat uh, by that method as well. I have that screen open. There are also a two more options down in the description. There is uh, Cash App is an option and Kofi is an option as well. And I will be keeping an eye on those uh, just to make sure that no one's super chats are missed and no whether they're statements or questions. I want to honor. I want to honor everybody's uh, effort to participate. And ahead of time, I'd just like to thank everybody who is participating in the live chat. Let's see, Fumble Bunny says, this is an important subject that I've been giving much thought to. Thank you, Jason. Well, thank you very much. It is important. And in fact, in the process of discussing this uh, this evening or uh, Sunday evening or Monday morning, wherever you are, I, I will briefly touch upon the role of women and how these intersect in a way that we can use this information to empower us as individuals and therefore our people as a whole. And it's very important because the, the big problem or one of the biggest problems is this misunderstanding of human nature. We see this so often, it's so omnipresent that it is, it's just taken for the norm. It's the fish swimming in water. You know, it's the, it's the bird through the airs. It's just taken for the norm now uh, that all of these mis all of this misattribution. So, and a great example, I'll say, and and we we all have probably said this at some point in our socio political maturing process. I said it, so don't feel bad. At one point in my socio political maturing process, and then I realized, no, that's incorrect. I'm going to dump that, and I'm going to adopt this. And the statement is this: that communism this idea of communism works good in theory, but not in practice. How many people have heard that statement or said that statement themselves? We all have seen these, these uh, uh, erudite individuals who have said as much, and then they've gone on lengthily in articles and in books to tell us why it works in theory, but not in practice. Seaver Hamlin says he's heard it. George, uh, says, my mother told me that a few years ago. 
Heidi says that she has heard it too. By the way, just I don't know if everybody saw this. This is the Great Poseidon's mug. If you have not frequented the Great Poseidon, we're gonna be we're also gonna be talking about uh, this this article uh, about the modern art uh, was a CIA weapon, and we're talking about that because it is in connection to intimate connection to the censorship of content producers today. Who gets censored? Why they get censored? Poseidon is one of those people, and we'll talk, be talking about why Poseidon is one of those people. Uh, so if you have not visited and subscribed to his channels, I think Spartan Warrior Queen might be here. Uh, I, thought I, I thought I saw her, her avatar somewhere on one of these screens, and if she is or someone else that could please post one of the other uh, mods, please post Poseidon's link so that people can... Uh, head on over to his channel and subscribe. Make sure you catch him every Saturday. I guess it's evening uh, for us in the Eastern United States. Pardon me. He also has a store. This is a this is a man with children. God bless him, uh, and standing up for white well-being. Buy some of his things. They're hilarious. I mean, look at the mug. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, we also have. Uh, I also have a way of the world mug. Not using it right now. Watch his channel. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet. Teddy Net News uh, asks, "How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing well. You know what's interesting? I just noticed that we're Teddy put the at symbol. Maybe we don't have to put the at symbol anymore when we tag someone." Phoenix Fire says, "Nice mug. Thank you so much." Adele says, hail Poseidon. Yes, indeed. Okay. Now, the reason why you have heard and you have said that communism works well in theory, but not well in practice, is a massive misunderstanding of the human animal, of the human condition, of human beings. Communism doesn't work well, period. It doesn't, saying that communism works well in theory, but not in practice, is identical to saying that you have a, a cream that works wonderful for, I don't know, preventing sunburn, but if you apply it to your skin, it will kill you. That could only arise from a misunderstanding of the human animal, what kinds of things that can be put on the skin, et cetera. So communism doesn't work well, period. And we cannot continue to allow ourselves to be handicapped by concepts that undermine our understanding of the world because it is based on those concepts that we then build framework for ideas, for programs, for vehicles, for white well-being and et cetera, that ultimately then will crumble because the base is flawed in the very beginning. So that's why we have to understand the core of manhood. Or, or at least my interpretation. Of course, you all are, are free to take whatever interpretation you want. Racial consciousness just said uh, no white guilt testing, and it came up tagged for me. Seaver Hamlin wrote, here's no white guilt with no ad symbol. Ladies and gentlemen, perhaps we have discovered right here on Going Free that you can tag me and I, let's see if you can tag each other in the chat without using the ads, but you can certainly tag now the content producer. Who knows how long this has been the case, uh, but you can certainly tag the content producer just by writing the content producer channel's name in the live chat. No need for the ad symbol anymore. Just get rid of it. We have a super chat, a big super chat from our good friend, ally, comrade, and hero, in the cause for white well-being, Quebec. Thank you so much, my good friend. Over on the platform that we always refer to as the familiar alternative down in the description. $70. Let's get a round of applause for Quebec. Selfless as they come. Thank you so much. I just finished watching the Red Ice interview and follow up uh, with a fellow Hoosier. Antifa is going after organic farmers. Yes, they are. In fact, what's the woman's name? What's the woman's name? The, the, the woman who has appeared twice on Red Ice. Uh, when you see all the black pills that passed this week, 
It's hard to see a light at the end of this tunnel. Can you share a positive message? Absolutely. That's what we're doing here today, Quebec. We are, we are positive. We are on 10 platforms right now. We are sending the message of going free out wide and far. And it is, as we've talked about, a curative contagion. And not only that, you know, people are being empowered by this lexicon. They're being empowered uh, by the dialectics that we are sharing here, which is something to be extremely excited about, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I've said, two births as a consequence of this community of going free and two people on the road to suicide that have turned away from suicide and are now improving themselves, bettering themselves, they are going free too. That is a, the profound things that are going on. And we have a comedy book that is now available. Uh, Quebec, if you didn't see it, uh, head on over to No White Guilt, the, the, my channel, and watch the video for this book. You can buy it electronically uh, if you'd like. You can get it in print. And as I said, it will be uh, sh shortly available on No White Guilt Collectibles. And you could get signed copies if you want signed copies. Uh, but uh, they are definitely good for a laugh. And uh, hopefully, I expect we'll bring more people to our circle. Uh, they'll come in, they'll see things like this. They'll see the art, they'll see the comedy, they'll see the music, they'll see the singing, uh, they'll see the poetry, all the things that are actually part of my life. Uh, I'm eventually going to take you all out into my lovely garden and we'll talk about gardening. I showed you, uh, I brought a, 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 a pet that I was holding until it went to its forever home. And uh, he's doing fabulously, by the way. Uh, the the owner and the dog. So uh, people will see that we are normal uh, white middle-class folks with normal sensibilities and that we are not the two-dimensional characters that the anti-whites have created for us. It, it It is an exciting time right now. The anti-whites are doing all that they can. They are scrambling to do all that they can to turn back the tide. And there's nothing they can do about it now, nothing. So we're going to get underway here in just a second. We're going to be talking about a lot more positive things. And probably one of the most positive is for all of you guys out there to finally, I know you've, many of you have grappled with this idea of what it means to be a man, what it means to be masculine. I'm going to tell you today. And that you can then focus on. This is the, the root seed. The, if we're using the Latin, the radix, the root seed of what it means to be a man. All things that we understand about manhood grow from this seed. And it's something that is totally absent in boys of any age. So it, in, in some boys, uh, you'll see it beginning to flower, young, young boys who are becoming men. And perhaps we can say that is when a boy has become a man. The, the Jewish tradition, I think, has uh, the 13 years of age, something of this nature. Uh, purely arbitrary, how many years you've been on earth, nonsense. Uh, the reality is that there is a something of substance uh, in those of Western kind, males of Western kind, that flowers at a particular point. And th those of you out there, those white guys out there that are men, not just males, not boys of any age, as soon as I say it, you all will know exactly what it is. It is also wholly non-existent in women. There may be an exception here or there, or it may in some small way be uh, appreciated or felt by few of our women, but by far and large, this is something that is purely for and of the men of our race, and it, it can also be present in the other way. I'm not saying it's just us, uh, but it is purely for our men and experienced by our men. And it is something truly for us that is incomprehensible to women. In fact, every time I've tried to share this with women, they immediately liken it to something that it's not like in any way, shape or form. So it demonstrates to me in every case that this, what, what I will tell you today is the core of manhood, is something that is wholly absent in women. They can't fathom it in the least. As I say, with few exception, there will be some women out there that will be able to understand uh, because it will be in some small measure present in them. The rest of them, it'll have to just be purely academic. 
as academic as it is for men when we look at women for what they what what is the core of their being it's purely academic for us again there might be some exceptions there might be some men out there that have the the instinct in some small measure that is the the core of womanhood inside of them i don't know what man would admit that but there might be uh in some men and then in some small measure they'll be able to experience what it's like or at least view what it's like uh to, to uh, be a woman and the core of a woman's being uh, but we're not going to dive deep into into that today but we will mention it as we work through this. And so by understanding what it means to be a man, we can work from that point forward and do great things for our people, grow this community in a way that calls upon men in a that calls upon men in a really robust way and shames them if they don't answer that call in a way that they won't be able to look in the mirror. That is extremely important for white well-being in a way also by the way that empowers them to ignore the objections of our women and to understand the objections of our women and it's going to empower women our women as well so that they know where their objection is coming from so that when he says when your husband or when your boyfriend or whatever says i know you object i'm doing it anyhow at least when he walks through that door, she will understand why he said, too bad, I'm gonna do it anyhow. It doesn't matter that you object. So we're, gr we're growing, we're getting more excited. We're getting more powerful. Yonash is here. Not sure how long I'm gonna stay here. It's already 16 minutes past midnight where he is. It's got to get up at 6 a.m. Jennifer P., I need to see the garden. You will love the garden. We're also, we're not just going to go into the garden. We're going to go work on my car together. I know I did a, a brake changing video uh, la last year, I guess it was. I was helping a friend in the cause uh, teach him how to change his brakes so that uh, he would be able to save some money for his family. And, uh, let me just read a couple of things you say here. But we're going to go out and we're going to work on my car. I'm going to teach you all uh, some some more simple things to do so that you can save a little bit of money. You won't always have to go to the mechanic shop to have work done and have them fleece you. Increasingly, of course, the mechanic shops are not operated by our people. And they will happily take all of your money when you walk through the door. All of these Laurel, yes, uh, Eternalism, yes. Adele, yeah, Heidi. But with the at, the name comes up where I can click on it without typing the whole name. Ah, well, okay. So that, pick your poison, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, either if you put the at, the whole name will jump up. You can just hit the tab and you don't have to write it anymore. Or if you'd rather not, you could just type out the name of the channel and it will show up. There's uh, Snow Duchess, I think I just saw for Null. And uh, you were here during the premiere. Fantastic to see you again. Thank you so much. Seeing Red is here. Great to see you. Nordic Warrior. What a great name that is. Ursa Major. Great to see you. Casa JB. Great to see you. I think I did say hello. Yes, I did. Sterling Price. Samantha Fox is here. Great to see you again. Polygon, Porsche girl. Great to see you. So many wonderful people in the community for white well-being. Kevin, good to see you. Kevin Burger King. Synthesize is here. Yes, indeed. Good to see you, brother. The stars are definitely coming out this good Sunday. Good Monday morning. Okay. So let's, I'm going to quickly take a look at, see what we have over here on Entropy. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not, please tweet, gab, Facebook, VK, uh, Minds, this link, this going free, and uh, we will get underway. Ryan Manley is asking, do I got a P.O. box? I do indeed. Uh, please, uh, do you, uh, Ryan, are you on Twitter? If so, 
watching and listening, uh, hello to you. Great to see you. Uh, you were here earlier as well. Maiden Deutschland, hello to you. Great to see you. Reach out to me, Ryan, uh, email or otherwise, and I will send you the P.O. box. I'm not going to do that over the live stream because who knows what the sick and demented, genital confused anti whites would ship me right away uh, with all of their threats about murdering me and my mother. I don't know why specifically they decided to pick my mother. It's like uh, you remember in elementary school, primary school, it was always the, <laughs> it was always the, the cut down remark on you and your mother. So it just seems to be that they are, it's the child's brain inside of their emaciated, ugly bodies. And it just has carried on through. It's going to be me and my mother. They're going to come and, and how do they even know my mother's still alive? I mean, maybe she's not for all you guys know. So, I mean, you're really wasting your time. You're going to, Kill her again, I guess. Yes, because uh, what they did was they anti-whites at YouTube, if you all didn't see this, I asked you all to uh, subscribe to Gardening with No White Guilt and the new one, Discipline with No White Guilt, uh, another friend's channel where you'll be able to find my content because the anti-whites came after my most successful video, uh, which was the one I made in response to Worski and a crew of anti-white twits who decided they were going to disparage in the snarky way that these losers are wont to do. Uh, anyone who decides they're going to say, or in any way, be heretical uh, toward anti-whiteism. You cannot, you cannot in, the, in the presence of anti-whites, be heretical. You, you must be as anti-white uh, as they demand of you, or they will attack you as the devil himself. That is the way anti-whites behave. And so that's how these this group of losers behave. Now I understand, yes, if you're a Worski fan, he's gone up and down, up and down. Sometimes he's sometimes he's uh, he's on point and he has come to reality. And then another time he's back, I get these messages, this rolling messages. The last ones are that he's, he's like a methamphetamine addict or something now. I commend him where he's gone right. And if he's fallen back into anti-whiteism, uh, then, of course, I damn him for doing that. Uh, but it's time for him uh, and uh, all of those folks, as a matter of fact, I invite everybody from that stream that I critiqued to all go free, to all come to white well-being. They could do something better with their lives than to be anti-white and to endeavor with all of their fiber of, the, of their being to destroy all of Western kind and Western civilization. They need to come away from that evil. Their lives will look a lot better. It'll be like they talk about in those ghost shows. I don't know if you all have ever seen these things during the Halloween, uh, you know, when, you, when we're nearing Halloween, they're on all the channels. And it's always the, it was dark and oppressive, the house. And then they came and they cleared things and it was, then the light came in. That'll, that it will be how the lives are for these anti-whites. The light will come in when they finally decide to embrace white well-being and they and uh, give up, surrender this notion of inflicting harm on Western kind and Western civilization. Anyhow, the, the video had 75,000 or so views. It still brought newcomers to the channel all the time. I had a new comment every uh, or two every week or so. Uh, as I said in the video, occasionally those comments were threats from anti-whites who were saying they were going to murder me and my mother and a bunch of other stupid things. Uh, um, of course, they never, they just were able to talk like that on YouTube. I can't say a word. Jared George can't say a word. We have to be very careful. We'll talk about why that is. But uh, rest assured that video in some iteration will make a return. Um, nonetheless, they did take it down, which, which of course was a it is a blow, but all of the all it does is it spurs me on. It's more coal for the fire, uh, which is why we continue to expand and thereby reach increasing number of people. And this is another thing, and then we'll, we'll really get rolling with uh, what we have, folks. And that is that I have a an absolute plethora of marketing ideas that are in the waiting that are you know, stage left, they're, they're waiting to, to, to be used. Uh, right now, the focus is on content uh, specifically, but once I get through most of the content creation, 
then all of these marketing ideas are going to be brought forward and we are going to rapidly grow this community. It's not going to be a, a slow growing uh, sycam sycamore or not sycamore, sequoia is the one I'm looking for. It's not gonna be a slow growing sequoia. This, it'll be rapidly growing uh, movement moving forward at that point. Uh, so have no fear. The other great piece of news that I wanted to share with you, Arna, specifically share with Quebec, is that the second edition of Go Free has gone to and been received by uh, the editor who is working on it now. So it's almost done. And once it comes back to me, I will finish it up and we'll make it available to you all. And then we will start to, and this one, by the way, is absolutely stuffed full of far more information. It is packed full of far more information that will be useful to all of you and all of your discussions with the friends, family, and strangers, and we'll begin taking calls so that we can have these conversations. We can talk about the specific dialectics, et cetera, and empower each and every one of you so that each and every one of you can serve as an, an individual node in the growth of this sphere for white well-being. We will become the body of gravity that pulls all things into the work that we are doing here, all things from the, the entirety of the sphere of white well-being and even spheres outside of that sphere will be drawn into the great work that we are doing here and the growth will be exponential at that point moving forward. So it'll, it's a very exciting times, very excited to be with you all. It's an honor to serve with you all in this great struggle for white well-being. Bigot Smalls has super chatted. And let's see, is that on, I guess that's on, might only be on entropy. Bigot Smalls, super chatting five US dollars. Thank you so much. Bigot Smalls is here on his best behavior because loves white a well being very, very much. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for the investment uh, in white well being and uh, for being here with us and on your best behavior. We always want to make sure that the chats are productive because we all know, each and every one of you know, that new folks are checking in all the time. And when they pop in, they're going to have a look at that chat. And what are they going to see? Are they going to see something that is going to intrigue them? Or are they going to see something that is loony and they're going to get run off? That is one of the reasons why we are careful with the live chats and uh, we observe strictly whether or not anti-whites come in pretending to be one of us and saying horrific things that uphold and prove the anti-white narrative so as to accomplish a couple anti-white objectives the first one of course to run off new people coming to the community and the second one so that when the anti-whites at youtube pass rules in the future that become retroactively enforceable that they can strike the channel at those times that's why we are so careful always thinking ahead of the anti-whites. Machiavellia Sucks is here, great to see you. Machiavellia Sucks writes, do the white women in the chat know that they are the most beautiful? They are indeed the most beautiful. Uh, the, uh, it, when we look at, regrettably, I mean, Ash mentioned this, uh, and we're gonna actually, we'll, uh, I'll just say, I'm also gonna briefly speak to in this process of talking about the core of manhood, uh, be talking about Ash, be talking about uh, Mirmers Bruner uh, as well, because they have a, a different idea or at least a different perspective than mine. Uh, and we'll also talk about this idea that this, uh, this uh, magical matriarchy idea that I'm going to blow to pieces today as well. And we're going to be getting to it in one moment. Let me just make sure we have everybody. Yonash says, do I know it, that today is the 80th anniversary of a historical period that we're not going to talk about because there is a group that has no power and they are watching everything that we are doing on this channel like a lidless hawk an unblinking hawk because it has no lids and ready for any moment to strike it down. All right, let's see. 
if anybody else said anything. Thank you, Seaver, for mentioning discipline with NWG. That is, if you haven't subscribed to that channel, please do. Unity Valkyrie, great to see you. You were here with us earlier at the premiere. Great to have you back. Great to have you there. Tree of Wisdom saying that I'm a non-white father to an adopted white girl who wants to know more about her biological history. Well, that is wonderful uh, that you are here with us. Please say that you endorse and support white well-being, especially since you have a child who is white. I imagine you do, uh, given that you are here. And uh, I will provide a... Uh, there, there, there are so many books on Anglo-Saxon history uh, and the rest of uh, white history that I could, I could mention. Uh, what we should do is put together a list of such books, put it up on my website. By the way, for all of you who have let me know that you've tried to write and this, this error issue is getting worse and worse on the website, we are going to be addressing that. So great to have you here, and uh, thank you for thank you for caring enough about your your daughter and her genetic heritage to ensure that she doesn't feel guilty about being a white little girl and a white person in today's anti-white society. I hope that you will stand by her side every time there's a message that will make her feel like she is from an evil people. And you will contradict that, that you will stand between her and those anti-white bullets. And if you do, I salute you and honor you as I would for any white person. So thank you for that. Everyone of every race, sexual orientation, et cetera, is welcome in the cause for white well-being. It is a decision that people in society can make. They, they decide for themselves whether or not they're gonna be anti-white or serve white well-being we just acknowledge the decision. So Tree of Wisdom also asked this question over on Entropy, it looks like, and got a couple of votes. So I just uh, answered it on YouTube, but took care of it over here on Entropy as well. But again, thank you so much. And please uh, let us let us know. Uh, how old is your daughter? We just had Ash on and uh, Ash Donaldson. If you look at the the, the last tap, which is the after party, you'll find that Ash Donaldson is an author of several books, two of which are for children. Blute and Bowden is one that, in fact, I just uh, uh, acquired the other days prior to, a couple days ago prior to the, to the interview, uh, and these are for children. Uh, the two of them are, one is for an adult, is for adults. And so you could start her off with these books, uh, if she's very young, you can read them to her, but certainly nine or 10 or older, uh, she should be well-equipped to handle the material. There are wonderful pictures in there as well. Okay, Unity Valkyrie says, in chat on both channels, but can only view on the other as this content is not available on this country domain due to a legal complaint. Really, already, is anybody else in a European country unable to see this stream on No White Guilt channel? And they're having to watch it on Gardening with NWG. Usually, I mean, they're getting, they're getting much quicker if that's already happening. Sean is here. Great to see you. Who else did I see? Red Pill Bulgaria. Great to see you as well. David's here. All right, folks. Let's see what other questions we have here. Craig says, like this format. Old Goat says, anything to get away from you know who, Tube. I can't. Simon Coates says something over an entropy that I is I can't repeat. 
Uh, Beer Hall Pooch says, Colette's first PWR meeting will be great. I'm sure it'll be splendid. I wish I had the money to jump across the pond. I would do so in a second. Samantha Fox says, Jason, will you call me one day? I absolutely will. Why not? Why wouldn't I call you? And this is all taking place over on Entropy. Uh, so by the way, folks, in this is, this is a question I really would like, and mods, if you could help me uh, s catch the answer if anybody gives it. If you are in a European country and you are unable to watch this going free stream right now on the No White Guilt YouTube channel, can you, are you able to watch the stream on Entropy? Are you able to pull up Entropy and see the video stream there? That's interesting. If you are, then for most folks, we can just forget about this uh, VPN. It, it scares some people for some reason. The idea of getting a VPN just seems really intimidating. Ryan Manley says he'll donate next week. You're donating already by just being here and sharing your thoughts and your presence. Thank you very much. All right, Yonash says he can see the stream after he changes his location to the US on YouTube. So that's been the case for a while that in some European countries, even though they're banning the content from entering the country, you can simply change the YouTube location from whatever country you're in to either the US or Korea or something like this. And what you're doing when you do that is you are simply viewing YouTube as it looks to the, to the people in those countries, which means that occasionally for some reason, if your government is blocking it from entering your country, say you're in Italy and it's being blocked, you can magically see how they are able to see the stream uh, in Korea or the US or Canada. Uh, in some places, though, that does not work. You have to use a VPN. And what we're experimenting with now is, are you able to see this stream in one of those countries where you are normally unable to see the stream, given the, the ban from the government? Uh, can you see it on Entropy? Because if you can see it on Entropy, we could just have people hop on over to Entropy and watch these streams. It would be fabulous. Samantha Fox says she changed her VPN to the United Kingdom and the stream was unavailable. Indeed, they do. The, the government at the UK definitely blocks my stream. They do not want our people in the UK going free. They want the country absolutely. Well, I don't even know if I can. They want border crossers of doctors and lawyers to come in and fill the country up. All right, <clears throat> we're going to we're going to get underway. <clears throat> Excuse me. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to turn the AC back on <laughs> because it is hot. It's getting hot in here with all these monitors and computers. Almost as hot as a night with me. So hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> all right. Let's see what's happening. And mods, please, if you could catch any of the comments about whether or not folks in any of those countries are able to watch the stream on Entropy, that would be fabulous. I really appreciate it. Uh, Samantha Fox says I'm funny. Sit aside, laughs. Andre laughs. Thanks so much. Sometimes I try to tell a joke and get it past everybody before they witness it. Let's see, do we have any, looks like we might have had some movement on Cash App. Dataless, super chatting $20 on YouTube, on Google. Thank you so much for that kind contribution to white well-being and writing, I am Germanoslavic, and to me, masculinity is hated by the modern world. Well, I'll stop you right there and say that it's hated when it's white. 
it's where non-white males are, are suffer in, in any way as a consequence of anti-whiteism. Uh, that is just that is just the, the damage that's being done to them that is unintended because we are being damaged in the process. The psychological warfare is not as precise as the laser guided bombs of the present. So it works, it works a little, a little different. It's just collateral damage essentially is what it is. When, when non-white males as males are behaving like men are undermined by the anti-white propaganda, but otherwise they're absolutely celebrated. I mean, I've been to, I've been to functions where they celebrate black men. And why is there always this? Does anybody, has anybody else witnessed this, this celebration of black men, black males, X, Y, Z, black males. Why are, why are they always celebrating black males and the manliness of black males? And the other thing is, have you ever witnessed this celebration of when the black male gets a job. Do you remember that if you're in the US? Maybe it happened elsewhere as well. But when the black male uh, would, would get a job, there was this big celebration. He got a job and I never understood. I was like, yes, isn't that what you're supposed to do? Aren't you supposed to get a job and support yourself and feed your family? If you wanna have a family, why is that something to celebrate? But, the, but, but their manliness is also so them behaving like men. That is celebrated as well. It's not, not just getting a job. But never is, never is the white man celebrated for being a man. He's only lauded by the regime and only barely by now when he goes out to, to kill and exterminate the peoples that are in the way of some anti-white objective. Then for a brief moment, he can have a little bit of uh, celebrity, if you will, but then it's right back to the hated, your, it's your toxic masculinity, et cetera. There is no masculinity today. Where is the masculinity? There's all, it's, it's an entire fiction. There, there is so little masculinity that when it shows itself, people become upset. I was talking on, during the stream on tap the other night with, with Ash and, and Jared, and I was telling them about when I would go out giving speeches to different uh, groups in the white positive sphere, I drove all over the state of Virginia, giving speeches, uh, uh, some places in West Virginia, Maryland, of course, DC. And at some of these places I went to and spoke, there, there are always fewer women than men. And of course, the reason why there are always fewer women is because they're afraid, not because they don't agree with us. It's because uh, the of what the anti-whites do. They assassinate characters. Uh, they are afraid of the physical violence and et cetera. But I would go to these, to these meetings and I'm, I embrace the core of masculinity. I embrace what I am at my core and it would cause the women in some of these cases to cry in fear. And the males I could see, they were just males. They were, they, some of them though, absolutely responded. They were men. It was lighting the fire of what it meant to be masculine in their hearts. They, they were going to be stepping up. Uh, but some of the others were afraid. Now, why were they afraid? I wasn't saying, uh, I never have said anything about committing violence or, or was talking about some sort of bleak future. I've never predicted such things. It was because I was talking about things in stark ways, in embracing reality for what it is and taking the steps that we have to take, the hard steps that we have to take to change things. And that is something that is at the core of manhood. And a man is gonna do it even when a woman is gonna cry because it scares her, or even when other males are going to shrink because they never became men, they're still boys. That is what a man does. That is what stood on the hill, for example, every time the soldiers in the War for Southern Independence we were grossly outnumbered. And folks, they were grossly outnumbered in almost every single battle. And yet the South won almost every single battle. It was a war of attrition. And so eventually the South without the industry, et cetera, was just, it was destined to lose uh, that, that conflict. Uh, but always grossly outnumbered, m most of them without shoes, 
most of them, you see these movies where they have uniforms. They didn't have uniforms. They were in their clothing from the farms they worked. Some of them had uniforms because they were from the army, but they were tattered and, and ragged, thread uh, bare uh, because of the, uh, mis the use, et cetera, and not having an opportunity to have these things repaired. But the heroism, the core of what it means to be a man was demonstrated so many times by the Southern generals and captains, et cetera, in that war. And a great example of that was Stonewall Jackson. Every time that morale seemed to wane, when these guys hadn't eaten in days, marching barefoot, feet that were bloodied and infected in a time when there was nothing, next to nothing you could do about it, carrying uh, this burdensome pack of rifle, musket, and weight, etc., in all conditions of weather, Stonewall Jackson would ride out to where the entire, to the entire army could see him. They would march by and see him and to let them know that he was going to be there at all times with these men, that he was going to be at the front, which he always was at all times with these men, that he would never let them down, which he never did. And just by seeing him in that stance, in that position, that lit the fire, reignited the fire in their hearts. And they would go off to another battle, another defense of home and hearth, where it would be five to one or seven to one. And they won those battles again and again and again. And we will win our battles. They're, they're now rhetorical battles. They're now battles of information, but we will win our battles the same way because men will become men again. That's how we're going to win. Not because we're going to be looking to some sort of misunderstood notion of what our ancestors uh, behaved like relative husband and wife relative to each other. Not because any of that, because men are going to be men again. That is what the regime really fears when it comes to Western kind, that we will stand up and be men again. So Daedalus continues to write, uh, corporation hate, governments hate it, but it, but it's important to build the fires of masculine energy. Very well written. Same for the feminine. Hail from Michigan. Hail, a big hail in return to Michigan from a Virginia boy here. I'm seeing people subscribe over at, I can see this, even though I can't see your comments, subscribing at Gardening uh, with NWGs. Thank you very much for everyone who has subscribed and is subscribing over there. Uh, TeddyNet.News is saying, watching over on Gardening Channel and chatting in this one. Brilliant. Uh, Johnny Size says, that's why we will win. He, J Folks, Johnny made a fabulous uh, a video. We're going to be premiering it on my channel as well in the coming weeks. We're going to be getting together again for another party. It's going to be fantastic. Daedalus says, it's clear that bravery was common to North or, or South in the Civil War and it only makes it worse looking back on it. We, we brother ought not to have killed each other. No, we should never exactly. There absolutely was uh, immense bravery on both sides. Uh, uh, our men, and we're not gonna do it again. We're never gonna have another one of these, uh, these brothers wars. We will be the loudest in opposition to any such conflict. Spartan Warrior Queen says 300 Spartans, remember? Absolutely. And in fact, I'm going to be mentioning that. Thank you for mentioning that. Let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me check really quick, though. We have over on Cash App. And then we're going to begin talking. Actually, we're going to begin talking about this because we are right at an hour. And then I'm going to address some super chats. Looks like we have some on Cash App. I didn't miss you if you super chatted over on Cash App. So I will begin to you absolutely. And... On Kofi, I will be getting to you absolutely over on Kofi. And let's see, do we have any on Thonic, on Entropy? Looks like we do. So I'll be getting to you there as well. And actually, it looks like I may have missed a couple over here. Uh, Pamela, 
Super chatting $1.99. Hello, Jason. Uh, Grimm's Fairy uh, Tales works too. Yes, indeed. Uh, please reach out to, uh, let me see. Did we lose? Did we lose the, may have lost. But Grimm's Fairy Tales, absolutely fantastic for white children. Uh, Pamela, great suggestion. Thank you so much. Uh, for for the super chat and for mentioning the fairy tales, uh, Fumble Bunny two dollars, just supporting Jason's work. Thank you so much. Most kind of you, and uh, we will make that contribution go a long way. And those words go even longer. Thank you very much for that testimony. All right. Spartan Warrior Queen says, we in Europe cannot go to entropy. So we are in the gardening. All right. Well, you all in Europe, I'm going to be getting a monitor just for you all. And I'm going to be able to see what you all are saying there. Sean Alexander says, Black Excellency, they call it. Ah, oh, when they are celebrating the black male. Indeed. Okay, so we now know, thank you, Seaver, that those in Europe are unable to get on to entropy. I will speak with Entropy and see if there's any way to get around that. Yonash says, can't see the stream on Entropy. Does it mirror NWG channel? Not at the moment. Only one at a time. Uh, Nine Ninth asks, do you have the support of your father when you were young in your fight for white well-being? I had... How can I? My father was a passionate but stoic gentleman. Very, very masculine. And so, without reservation, he supported me in that I was fighting for what I believed in. My parents were the kind of uh, patriot types that they, they, they weren't advocates for white well-being by any means, but at the same time, they were opposed to any, any rule or law that would undermine any group. And the only group that was being undermined by rules and laws was the white race. The, for the totality of my life, there has never been a time when it was non-whites being undermined by rules or laws. It was only our people. So my parents uh, lamented that that was the case. Um, it was my father who showed me how to throw a punch, uh, who, uh, and then I, I of course, worked on a lot more on my own of how to uh, how to fight and uh, studied etc but i guess generally speaking there was some tension uh, quite a bit of tension in the house that my father more or less stayed out of uh, when i was fighting for white well-being in, in uh, junior high school uh, he just i guess he he was supportive of me behaving like a man, even though I was a boy. And it, even though it was things that nece maybe necessarily he would not have been able to muster maybe the courage for, uh, who knows, who knows. But he certainly supported uh, me when I was doing something that I believed in and I was standing my ground. But he wasn't, uh, I guess I wanna say, the because I'm trying to think about how everyone might be interpreting both the question and the response. I might also say there was never a moment where he was patting me on the back and saying, it's a good thing that you're fighting. Uh, it's a good thing that you defend yourself. It's a good thing that you stand up and articulate your views. They were, never did that. My father communicated most of his lessons without words. And uh, so there was when I would have marks on my face 
from fights, cuts, etc. He might, uh, he would see me and he, he might say, as he did a couple of times, uh, how's the other fellow look? <laughs> and I would say worse and Then he would just nod. And that was just about the, the end of it. So that was a support. It wasn't, that's what I took as support. There wasn't a moment of, of celebrating, uh, what I was fighting for, what I was arguing about or, um, or getting in fights. There was never any reckless moment like that. He wasn't, he wasn't that way. He was, he was a controlled energy that wasn't at any point wild and juvenile. So there was no moments where he would say, yeah, but I mean, he was a real man. There's so few of them left. So few people know what they are anymore. Racial consciousness making a great point here. They celebrate black men to put down white men and to drive white women to black men. Indeed, very well said, racial consciousness. There's nothing more demoralizing than one's women being claimed by foreign conquerors. Indeed, very well said. D.B. Cooper says he sent me a question and a coffee. I'll be getting to it, brother. I saw, I saw it up there. Absolutely not going to mention it. Not going to forget to mention it. All right. I'm getting this the skill of reading multiple chats and speaking at the same time. I wonder if the 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 children that come out of doing such things are gonna have like their brain will be divided into quarters instead of halves. All right. Sean Alexander says we don't get to choose our parents, but you do choose how you will grow alongside them. Very well said. That's a profound statement. Yeah, all of our parents, Lisa P says he, he wasn't anti-white, but he wasn't pro-white. That's right. My parents were not, absolutely not anti-white. They were far from that, but nor were they white positive or actively white positive. I guess they were passively white positive in the sense that they wanted everything to be fair for everybody. Best man wins the job, best man, et cetera. You know, sort of a mindset. Uh, they hadn't, they, they hadn't, the society had moved so quickly past our people that best man for the job was absolutely anachronistic uh, at that point. There was no best man for the job. They, anti-whites had long since redefined that the, the context as one in which uh, white people have to be handicapped so that these non-white people can, can, take all the jobs that the whites had worked so hard for, take all the promotions the whites had worked so hard for. So that's, that's where my parents were. And so my parents would have been some of those white people that would have been saying, no, best man for the job, objecting to these, to these uh, laws and rules of companies, et cetera. Uh, Daedalus says, if we had organizations to help guide our young men, I can only imagine that things would be better off for all of us, white or otherwise. I had no ill uh, will toward uh, others that have none to me. Absolutely. I don't, uh, it doesn't bother me what uh, race you are. If you want to support white well-being, you're welcome. If you want to stand on the sidelines and you couldn't, you don't care one way or another, you, that's fine with me. The only time that it's a problem, I have a problem with you of any race is when you decide that you're going to be anti-white. Then I've got a problem because then you've made yourself my victimizer. Laurel says the apple did not far, fall far from the tree at all. Well, that's very sweet of you. Thank you so much for, for saying that. Okay, let's get rolling. I'm going to definitely hit these uh, super chats though. Nobody's going to get missed, but I want to get this thing underway. Art Acrobat says, Jason is a brain. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Uh, I mean, I'm, as long as I'm a brain in the service for our people, then I'll absolutely accept the compliment. Okay, the core of manhood. I took some quick notes on this. Uh, I'll tell you how, how busy I have been, uh, but, but I'll, I'm just going to look over them. So it was uh, Ash Donaldson, the author, uh, talked about the core of manhood when he read a passage from his book, which is titled From Her Eyes, A Doctrine, and the book could not come 
uh, more highly endorsed by our very own Jared George, a absolute uh, icon and, and hero among our people. Uh, so that is to say a lot. And I will be reading from Arise of Doctrine very soon. It is written, interestingly enough, uh, by Mr. Donaldson from a female's perspective. So showing an adroitness of mind to be able to do that. Well done. Uh, he said, Ash, in the interview that uh, Mamir's Bruners, and of course we uh, interviewed Phil, I believe his name is, from Mamir's Bruner. I think there's a team there that assembles the work. Uh, so he mentioned uh, Mamir Br Mamir's Bruner video that is titled True Romance as the visual representation of what he put into text, of what Ash put into text. In the text, so Ash read this this part of uh, part of his book, and it's uh, the part that he read is about this uh, the 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 female protagonist is she has some sort of a magical power. She's able to to peer into the memory of a male who is with her, and one of Athelstan, I think his name is. I haven't started reading the book. I'm just recalling from the interview. And uh, the, the male is recounting this experience. And so she's able to feel it a little bit and, and she recounts it. It's splendidly written by Ash. Well done, Ash. Uh, and uh, let's see, in that, in that bit of text that Ash recited to us, and I'm, I was doing this from memory. So if I'm wrong, Ash, my, my deepest apologies. Uh, and uh, if anyone here uh, can tell that I've, I'm, re I'm recalling this wrong, then please correct me. But I believe Ash said, quote, women are bound up with life, but men with death, close quote. And he also wrote that the, the male character, I, I, of the male character, he wrote, a young man fallen in love with death. Those are two sentences I remember. I, I hope I'm remembering them. I'm remembering them correctly. Uh, and then, as I say, he mentions Mamir's Bruner's video, True Romance. And I have a note here about, let's see, maybe it's a little bit further down. But before I, before I get to that, what I wanted to say is when I was a child, I used to wonder well, it wasn't for a long period of time. It was when I was a child, when I was a younger man, I wondered uh, whether or not a woman came the closest she could to being a god or approximating a god by giving life. And then if that were true, did a man on the other side of this dichotomy approximate a god or come as close as he could to being a god by taking life? And I didn't like, you know, I thought about it and I didn't like this idea because the, the dichotomy seemed, seemed evocative. And so I wondered, is that just a function of speech that since there's this, this apparent dichotomy and it seems like, you know, we have a, and our brains are two hemispheres. So we view all things and this can be another discussion on another live stream, but we view all things as up, down, right, left, no matter how many options there are, there are only two options when it comes right down to it. There's the one you choose and everything else. When you have multiple parties, it's the party you're in and all the other parties. Anyone saying that they're holding all of these other things in their mind at once is lying or they just, they don't know what's taking place in between their own ears. They're seeing what they have chosen and everything else. Everything we break down into a dichotomy. So I wondered if this was a function of that, a function of speech, but since it had this evocative, hey, if women are birth and life, then men are, are killing and death. Since it had that evocative sense to it, I recoiled because I didn't want to make an error of objective thought based on an evocative aspect of the language or and or the human thinking that everything was up or down 
right or left, forward or backward. And that was something that I had already discerned prior to speculating about this men and women. And I thought about the issue more, the thing that also really turned me off to this. And this really seems like where Ash and Mamir's Bruner are coming from with this women are bound up with life, but men with death. And for a man, his greatest romance. That That's... This is it right here. This is the, okay, I almost confused myself. The quote from Amir's Bruner's video right at the very beginning, the, the true romance was, for a man, his greatest romance is with death, is what Mamir's Bruner says on that video. That's right at the very beginning of the video. For a man, his greatest romance is with death. And then I, I believe I, I accurately quoted Ash and my apologies if, if I was off. But it seems like what both of them are saying is that this is what, what I used to think in the past, is what they think now, is their position now. Women are bound up with life, men with death. The greatest romance for a man is with death. When I thought more about it, and again, I said that the, the nature of it being this dichotomy and being evocative, the nature of human thought, me wanting to pull away from that for fear that I would make a thought in in uh, an error in thought, an error in judgment. But also, I followed the logical consequence of men being bound up with death. And that doesn't only speak to death on a battlefield. If we say as a principle or as a even a romantic understanding of the universe, of our world, of our ancient history, of our present, of our future, if we say that, then one of the logical consequences is murder is for a man an act that brings him the closest he can come to being a god, the closest he can come to being a real man, a true man. To serve the core of his being then is death, it is to murder. And so the only way I could get back to and rationalize the original speculation was with this complicated explanations of, of why murder would be unacceptable, but then in another context, it would be acceptable. And yet somehow it was still death. So it never worked for me. And I abandoned it. it, it also because it was just not terribly relevant at the time. It didn't really matter. I see uh, Mrs. Horse just uh, super chatted $9.99. Thank you so much for the kind investment and white well-being. Let's see, as I'm talking about this, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any thoughts or questions, tag me and jump right in or super chat and hopefully I'll see that while I'm talking. So does everybody understand what I'm saying when, I'm, when I say that Ash and Mamir's Bruner are saying women are bound up with life, but men with death, a young man fallen in love with death, and then Mamir's Bruner's that for a man, his greatest romance is with death and how this was problematic for me, how I didn't see how it could serve us. Do any of you see how that could serve us? How can it benefit us for to believe that our women are focused on life, that that is at the core of, them, of what a woman is, and men are focused and at the core of what we are on death? I can't see how it would benefit us. It takes a, an enormous amount of explanation, of explicating why in this scenario, yes, in that scenario, no. And so that's not something that you can easily pass on um, for, you know, we, we have to appeal to a whole range of IQs. We can't just have the 150 IQ saying, well, I can understand how under 13 different circumstances it's wrong and in these 24 circumstances it's right. I see this, let's see what racial consciousness just said. It says, whether it's beneficial for us or, or not, men have always valued the concept of a noble death. It's just part of what we are. We don't have to obsess on it though. Well, I'm gonna free you, my good friend. I'm gonna free you in just a moment because it's, it, is this, it is this notion that men are bound up with death 
that undermines, and I think really I, men who are males of our race who should be behaving like men are troubled by this idea that we are that we are bound with bound up with death that that's our romance uh, because it's a gruesome thing i mean it, out of the a specific context where i said you have to you have to have this great explication etc uh, it is absolutely immoral it is not a a wonderful thing to murder someone it is totally immoral to murder and uh, we absolutely reject violence or that anything good would come from any violence. At the same time, we promise that we will always defend ourselves, but we reject all violence. So I'm going to I'm going to free you and everyone here in just a moment. What I see is this idea that men are bound up with death. I see this as a notion that is looking that is looking past the the sun for the moon. You're looking at when we focus on the death aspect as the core of what it means to be a man, the core of manhood. We're looking to one artifact, in this case, my analogy, the moon, and we're looking right past the sun, the source of the light on the moon. If that, if that makes, if the analogy makes sense for people. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grant to, to Ash and Mamir's Bruner, Phil, that perhaps we're saying the exact same thing, and this is a matter of perspective. So perhaps we're looking at the exact same thing. Uh, human fallibility is potentially at play here. We're saying the same thing, different perspectives. But even if we have different perspectives, I'm arguing that this perspective is superior to these, the perspective that we're bound up with death. Far superior. This is the way I live my life. This is one of the ways that drives me and, and, and ignites the flame in my heart. And I argue that all white males who behave like men are ultimately behaving and understanding this concept without being able to, behaving in accord with and understanding this concept without ha being able to articulate it exactly as I will for you all in just a moment. The first thing that I see as a problem with this idea, uh, or I guess the second thing now, that I see as a problem with this idea that manhood, the core of manhood is death, is that it doesn't explain the other acts of what it means to be a man in our lives. Like impregnating a woman. If man, if the core of manhood is bound up with death, then how do you explain impregnating a woman being something that a man wants to do and the outcome of that explaining what a man wants to do? Again, it's going to take extra explanation. How about doing the right thing when the wrong thing would benefit him? Again, if death is at the core of manhood, which actually, you know, the more we talk about it and the more we focus on it, it just seems increasingly sleazy, in increasingly gross, increasingly ignoble. The more we focus on it, the worse it looks. So that's why I, def I decided that the defining element uh, which separates males from men, boys from men, and absolutely fundamentally separates women from men. Because when you think about uh, death and killing, would a woman kill? Yes. Women murder, women kill. Uh, if someone's going to, if, if, if a carjacker is going to run off with a woman's child in the car seat and she shoots him dead, before he can do that, uh, she's also a killer at that point, not a murderer because it was just. But that's not, the killing, the death is not the point. The difference is that I see that fundamentally separates men from boys, men from males, and definitely men from women is glory. 
There is something in every man. Some of us begin to feel it as boys, as we begin to transition, we begin to get a little older, and perhaps we can say that that moment when a boy feels this sentiment inside him that I'm going to define in one moment, that's the moment he's become a man. So it is this desire to strive for something that is ineffable and beyond him. It is genetic, it is spiritual. It is the reason why I am sure we are still here today. Because there are men that felt that the drive for glory, specifically the glory, glory in the defense of their people, was the preeminent thing, the greatest thing that they could do for their people, the greatest thing that they could do with their life would be to go out into conflict, to strive for glory, and the more likely death in the midst of struggling for glory, the more shining that glory. That is what is at the core of manhood. How many times, and I'm talking to you men out there, I've seen it dozens of times. How many times have you felt it or seen it? That it's been that someone has been recounting a story of some heroic battle where men are dying left and right, perhaps where the cause is hopeless, like Leonidas and the, the 300 Spartans. And you longed to be there in that moment. If you felt that, you're a man. If you felt in your heart great joy at the prospect of joining your brothers in conflict, sacrificing yourself, potentially death, for your people, struggling shoulder to shoulder with death and gore all around you, likely as not to never return home, if you felt joy in your heart, and tears welled in your eyes for that moment, you are a man. If you felt that at 10 years old, you're a man. If it took until you were 30, you're a man. In all my years of hearing these stories and being with groups of people, I have seen dozens of men, their eyes glisten, fill with tears, hearing about the bravery hearing about the camaraderie, the moments of deepest passion, the moments of greatest pain, the moments of greatest glory. And I've seen tears stream down their cheeks for those moments. That is something truly magical. That is what's at the core of what it means to be a white man. Not death, but glory. You know what else I've noticed? When I've looked around the room at these telling of these stories. I have seen males who looked afraid. They weren't men. I've seen boys who have grabbed onto their mother's skirts. They weren't men yet. Hopefully they became men. And one of the most interesting things that I've never seen, and again, setting us apart, setting this apart as something that is only intrinsic to the white, to the white male and without saying that it's, it doesn't hold true for non-whites, but we're talking about our people here, is that I have never in my life seen a woman tear up with joy at the thought of being able to give her life for her people in bloody combat. Not a single time. In fact, when I share, and this is going to Spartan Warrior Queen's statement a little earlier, when I share with people that one moment, and I'm going to ask you all out there, if you could live for one day, what would it be? What would you be doing? Where would you be? Who would you be with for that one day? I've asked this question many times of folks over the years. I was curious about the differences, what went through people's minds, differences between the sexes and the like. One of the things I always found was that when I was talking to men, there was always a struggle for glory when they talked about living one day. 
my one day, if I could have any day to live in all the history of the world, it would be with Leonidas and the Spartans. I know saying that, that I would die that day. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be on some soft bed surrounded by sex partners. I wouldn't be a glutton feeding myself. I wouldn't want to sit with children and nieces and nephews and as wonderful as that could be. I would want to be on that battlefield for that one day to strive for glory for my people, to give all that I had as a man. Why? Why do we do that? What is it inside of us, of white males, that make us yearn for such moments, that make our eyes fill with tears that God willing we could have such a day? There is something in our spirit, ladies and gentlemen. We don't want to die on that battlefield, but God, if we do, what a glorious death that would be. And that is what we fight. That is why we fight. That is why we struggle. We fight for that ineffable master that has called upon us to lay down all that we have so that our people may continue. That is the glory at the core of what it means to be a man, wholly alien to the boy and fundamentally alien to the woman. That is what differentiates us. And every time I have told our women that that would be the day I would live, I cannot tell you it has been unanimously inscrutable faces. Why in the world? That demonstrates that it is incomprehensible. It doesn't exist in women. The desire to fight for an ineffable master beyond us that holds aloft this thing called glory, the sacrifice of all of who and what you are for a moment to give your life for something that beautiful, is incomprehensible, only academically comprehensible. That is the big difference. That is what I see as at the core of manhood. And ladies and gentlemen, when you view manhood, the core of manhood as glory, you then can understand how all of the other acts that we say are the acts of a man make sense. Whereas death does not make sense and is quite dangerous. We can talk about that as well. You understand how a man impregnates a woman so that he can hold his children on his shoulders. Because that is in keeping. Giving that life is in a small way in keeping with that moment of ultimate glory of the ability to lay one's life down for one's people. You can understand why a man decides to do the right thing instead of the wrong thing when the wrong thing will benefit him. Because that again, in a small way, is the strive, the striving for glory. Again, on the macro scale, the laying down of one's life for one's people, if that's what it results in. And the more glorious, the more shining that glory. If it is a battle like it was for the Spartans, when it was known there was no hope for victory. That glory, ladies and gentlemen, is what explains all of the other behavior or behaviors and acts of a man. It explains the acts of my father. It explains the acts of your fathers, those of you who are lucky enough to have men as fathers rather than boys as fathers or males as fathers or no fathers at all. And it is what you and I, men out there, boys out there, males out there, are going to have to embrace if we are going to save our people. 
And here's the reason why. I just, I have a note here I've got to mention. How absurd does it sound to all of you to think about a woman having tears stream down her face because her heart sings at the prospect of reaching for eternity in glory in combat where she knows she's going to be cut to pieces. Never. It is the most absurd notion. It is not death, it is glory. Now what I'll say about women is this. A female becomes a woman when she embraces her core identity as a woman. But their core identity is a completely different focus from that of a man's. The difference between man and woman in this respect, both absolutely essential for the existence of our people, is not life and death. It's inward looking and outward looking. The woman ensures our survival as a people by looking inward into the production of life, into the children, whether she has children or not, by looking inward. The man ensures our survival by looking outward, by striving for glory, that ineffable glory beyond all things. Here's the problem today. The problem today is that we have matriarchal societies. So women control men, absolutely. And a woman looks inward toward her womb to ensure the survival of our people. So when it comes to the man doing his job, the woman says, no, you need to serve me and my focus, which is inward. And because we have a matriarchal society, he says, how high shall I jump? What hoop shall I jump through? Rather than saying what he should say, which is, sugar, I'm gonna be a man and you're gonna to have to deal with it. And he's gonna head out the door to defend our people. That is what you have to do if you're a male and you want to be a man. I told Jared, George, and Ash in the audience on the stream the other day, the TAP stream, about how I have gone for years now, I've been in the calls for white well-being, and I have come across man after man after man who said they weren't allowed to participate because their wife said no, because their mother said no, because their sister said no, because their girlfriend said no, and one occasion where a guy said his daughter said no. These women were not doing anything wrong by saying no. They were serving the core of their being. They are absolutely in tune with the core of their being. I'm not saying that women are perfect. In this behavior, in this instinct, they are serving the core of their being, the inward looking toward their womb for the survival of our people. The males are failing to serve their being. They're failing to say, no, I'm going to do what I have to do as a man and then walk out the door to do your duty. That is what continues to undermine and hamper us and has for a great many decades now. And if we continue to allow ourselves, males out there, guys out there, if you continue to allow yourself to be a boy, bossed around by your mother, sister, wife, girlfriend, or daughter, we won't be able to save our people. I'm not even gonna bother trying to ask the ladies to not serve the core of who and what you are by beseeching the men in your lives to not go out to battle and this the battle today is not a battle of killing and dying on a battlefield the battle today is oratorical yes it is information warfare yes 
the reputation could get assassinated. Yes, the anti-whites might say mean things about you and your community might ostracize you. And ost being ostracized, it, it lights up the exact same pain receptors as physical pain. I understand all of that. I'm not trying to get you to reject what is natural and normal for you. I want our women to continue to uphold the core of their being so that we can survive as a people. But now more than ever, I want our men to say to our women, no, I will not serve your inward looking core. I will instead strive for glory for our people and do my duty as a man. That more than anything is what we need right now. That is what all of those men should have been saying over all of these years, me trying to get them to come out to meetings. That is why so many of the young men today who come out and pass out leaflets, who come out and, and attend these uh, symposiums when we know the anti-whites are gonna show up. That's why so many of them either don't have girlfriends or you they keep them secret. You're not allowed to know if they have them or not because they are mustering up the courage to be a man and say, no, I'm going to do this, whether you like it or not whether it serves your immediate inward looking interest or not. That is what we have to do, all of us. That is what it means to be a man. So I wanna see what some of you all are saying. I'm gonna get a drink. Daedalus writes, is there a way to build a family in the modern world? Is it unreasonable to seek such in, the mo in this modern world? It is all I desire, a strong family. It is not absolutely not unreasonable. You can build a strong family. Stick with us. And we talk about it often. Thank you very much for this kind super chat and for the great question. We must be building strong families. And in the construction of those families, you as a man need to be ready to say to your wife, while she holds her children, your children and her children in her arms, you need to be able to say, I'm going out to defend our people. And when she says, you can't go, don't go. When her fear speaks through her and her focus that's totally natural on herself and those children, and she says, don't go, you, sir, have to be a man and you have to say, too bad, I'm going anyhow. Teddy, News, Teddy Net News, super chatting by way of the familiar alternative, $5. For how long, for how long are you on YouTube? Uh, for how long ever? Or for how long this evening? I'm not sure about the question. Thank you very much for the super chat. Probably at least another, at least another hour. But thank you so much, Teddy. I, I see you here all the time. You're a good person. We have nothing but good people here. Matthew J, super chatting $20 by way of the familiar alternative. Thank you for your continued service to white well-being, Jason. I hope the donation helps. The donation will absolutely help. I will make it go a great distance. This is one of the skills, one of my skill sets. But more importantly, your, your endorse, endorsement as a man for another man and the work that I do for our people, work that absolutely if uh, I've had to, I've had to say in the past, and I've mentioned this before, I've had to tell uh, girlfriends to hit the road because they were too afraid of the things I was saying. Don't go. Don't say that. Don't let the people know. Come on, folks. You all know it's true. Sir Charles Edmonds says, uh, mess uh, Check VK message when you get the time, please. I absolutely will. Thank you for that. Uh, Tree of Wisdom says, in his opinion, Western man's problem is a lack of rite of passage and sense of belonging to a society built by his forebears and sadly stolen from them. Poseidon live in 30 minutes. Poseidon's going live in 30 minutes. Okay. Well, I did not know that. Thank you for sharing that. And that's a great point that you're making. Perhaps this is the way that uh, this acknowledgement of this moment in a boy's life 
when or once he becomes a, a older in years than what we would refer to as a boy perhaps that moment when we talk about those great heroic struggles and you see tears well in his eyes that is the moment that you know he's a man because that is the moment that some ineffable spirit sown in us over the eons has spoken his name to him and has reached out its hand and said come to me strive for glory defend your people even if it takes your life and because it takes your life it will be the greater the glory that's when we know that he's heard the voice of our race that's when the voice has spoken to him and we can also know this that when a male reaches all of the years of his life and nothing stirs in his heart upon hearing of these greatest of struggles we know that he never heard that voice that he never became a man and that's fine not everybody not every male has to be a man but a lot more of us are going to have to be if we're going to save our people from ruination Double uh, X says man's death drive is actually the drive to transcend death. Uh, that's, I would argue against, we're not, we don't, the tears don't well up in our eyes because we want to die. The tears well up in our eyes because we're striving for glory and death or the, the, those moments in the contest in the defense of our people returning from those moments that enshrines us and transcends death so it's not the drive for death i mean go ahead and take that same statement death drive and apply it elsewhere does it make sense a man could get in his car right now and drive 100 miles an hour into a tree and be dead does he transcend death? Does that well tears in his eyes? No, it's the glory that we're fighting for. It's the glory that we struggle for. It's ineffable. It is truly something beyond us that pulls us forward. Racial consciousness says, I completely agree that glory is the core of manhood, but that doesn't negate white men valuing a noble death. Well, the noble death, uh, and, and thank you uh, for, for sharing your agreement, brother. Uh, noble death is achieved by striving for glory. That's what we call a noble death. So you see how when I said we're looking past the sun for the moon, we're looking at the reflection of the moon, death, instead of the sun, which is the struggle for glory. So well said, thank you very much. Sifu says, couldn't agree more, Jason. Matthew J says, I've turned down women who are lacking in morality. You absolutely should. Well said. Pamela writes with $9.99. Thank you so very much for the kind super chat. A strong family, build a house, hearth, uh, edible lands, landscapes, then interview and interview again. Uh, get the courage to marry and go for happiness uh, be discerning uh, and get the get the courage to marry and go for happiness yes absolutely agree totally that is how you build a strong family a lot of interviewing no sex don't let sex interfere with your interviews all right let's see db cooper super ch chatted over on kofi six dollars thank you so very much db cooper i told you we wouldn't miss you tonight uh writing is augustus victus a man we should openly support secretly support or is he not the one we need right now feels like we are grasping for any rope to pull up from the ledge i think that uh augustus i i haven't looked into his campaign deeply or what he's trying to do specifically but i think he's running an information campaign saying that he's running for president to get attention so that folks will look at what he's sharing about white well-being. And should, should you support him? I don't know. It depends on what constitutes support in your mind. Um, it, understanding what he is doing, 
and uh, that it's an information campaign, by what means are you defining support? Uh, does he need to, for example, does he need money to pass leaflets out about his campaign? Are you going to roll up and create leaflets and go pass them out? Is that what you mean? Or are you meaning don't go to your, uh, to your get together at Labor Day tomorrow if you're in the States and, and say you're going to um, vote for Augustus Invictus for president and then articulate a bunch of the things that he's saying and have these people go, do, why do that when Augustus is not going to win uh, unless you're going to bring up some other concepts by mentioning his name? Because all you're going to do is you're going to bring up somebody that no one knows of and they're going to think you're weird for bringing it up and you're going to be burning your reputation in the process of doing so. Maybe you could say there are these other people who are running for president too. You know, there's this guy, Augustus Invictus, uh, and uh, there is, uh, what's the, who's, what's the other guy's name that's uh, running for president up in the uh, Northeast? I just forgot his name. That's my suggestion. If you're going to bring it up, then bring up their names so that uh, you can then go into topics about white well-being, about going free. But you just generally think about someone coming to your family get together and saying, I'm going to vote for, and then especially with uh, a, 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 I guess an obscure name as Augustus Invictus. Think about how that would sound to you, how that would land on you. You don't want to seem like you are out of step with the norm. You want to, you want to pace the people that are going to be at your party, and then you want to lead them. So, using Augustus Invictus in the sense of saying, "Hey, there's this other guy that's that's running for office. His name's Augustus Invictus, and he cares about these things." And you can use it that way to deflect from yourself a little bit. That's a way to do it. But don't go in there as some sort of champion for somebody that nobody knows. And they're gonna they're gonna hear a name that is unfamiliar and a little uh, strange from uh, different from the norm, and then they're going to associate you with bizarre things. It's just going to harm your reputation. That's called reputational investment. So thank you very much for that, DB Cooper. And we have a snow duchess, and absolutely, ladies and gentlemen, please get your applause ready for Snow Dutch, Tom Kaczynski, well, that's his name. Tom Kaczynski is uh, the other guy running. So you could say Tom Kaczynski uh, and Invictus, they're both running for office. These are their views that they hold. What do you think? And then deflect that way. Snow Duchess, super chatting with $100. Big round of applause, please, everyone, for Snow Duchess. Fantastic super chat. And writing for Kindred Creator Contest winner. Oh. This $100, she says, is specifically for the winner of the contest. So I will make sure to get this over, this $100, over to Jared George uh, and Porridge to go into the kitty for the winner of that video. Thank you so much for that, Snow Duchess. And we have Slot super chatting over on Cash App. $10 today. Thank you so much. For San Francisco approved film, let's see. Oh, yes. For the San Francisco approved film, Why Not Kill Whites? Why Not Kill Whites? I haven't read up on this yet, but I heard of it. Thank you very much for that $10 and bringing attention to that absolutely repulsive film that could only be shown in an anti-white America. You could imagine, put any other group into the group of the, the racial group that is being named there. And what would the results be? So thank you very much for that kind super chat. And we will make sure that we haven't missed any more over there. And then I will jump to, I'll just do that now actually. We'll jump over to Entropy and uh, we will get the super chats from there. Uh, Canadian Long Border, super chatting $10. Thank you so much. Saying hello from Canada. Well, hello from Virginia. Thanks for being here, brother. We have 
Heidi's super chatting over on Entropy. Thank you so much. My husband is very masculine. She super chatted $5. Thank you, Heidi. Pardon me. I don't understand women who don't appreciate men who, who are not masculine in the sense of being protective, caring, hardworking, polite, and fearless and family oriented. Indeed, Heidi, thank you so much for that kind super chat. Uh, they, uh, women who are not looking for that in a man are broken and just as men are broken in many ways. So thank you very much. Samantha Fox, super chatting over here on Entropy, $15. Thank you, my fair lady. Tonight I donate to White Wellbeing in honor of the greatest man I've ever known. Miss you, Papa. That's very touching, Samantha Fox. A big salute to your father and for all that he did for rearing such a wonderful uh, young lady to become a wonderful woman. Thank you so much for that kind super chat in your father's name. Heidi, super chatting again as I'm speaking. Five more dollars. Jason, you really hit the nail on the head. And you are so true to the fundamental difference between men and women. My husband, Raymond, and I are very aware of this difference. Again, very fundamental. Indeed, thank you very much. You and Raymond are wonderful people. Thank you for being in our rapidly growing community for white well-being. It is an honor to serve with you as it is an honor to serve with all of you in this cause for white well-being. You all will be able to see now moving forward. Let me make sure nobody else has... Looks like Entropy has, the crew at Entropy has fixed my particular dashboard. So now I can see the chats as they come in, they move to the top. By understanding that the desire for glory, this ineffable thing, that voice that speaks to us as, as uh, white males, by understanding that that voice is the thing that really de delineates uh, men from women and men from boys, uh, we can then understand, as I say, all of the other actions that we discuss or as actions of a man, as duties of a man. All of it makes sense because it lies in the same line and keeping with that desire for glory at the end of the day, that desire for the ultimate victory. The thing that calls upon us to do that noble deed is the same thing that calls upon us to do other noble deeds that are not as great. Does that make sense? Do, we, do you understand now how all of it then falls into this, this perfect row of understanding that if you set this guiding star at the very top of, of, this, of this path, if you will, of this journey that is life for a man, if you will, if you set that guiding star, that North Star for us, then the rest of the deeds make sense. It's the reason why when a man strays or when a male strays from that path, we don't think of him as a man anymore. It's the reason why when he stays on that path with those deeds, deeds that comport with that ultimate northern star, that we call him a man, that we honor the things that he does, that we tell our young boys, there is a man, my son. That is how you should behave. It is because those deeds are in keeping with that great northern star of glory, striving for glory. So we define glory not in its broadest sense, as you might find in a handful of dictionaries, but in the narrow sense of that voice that speaks to men, that puts out its hand and asks us, demands of us, to come to the defense of our people, the defense of our tribe, even though it may mean our death. And that, if it does mean our death, all the brighter shines the glory. Tell me that is not something that's truly magical inside of us. And the same, but a completely different view is for women. When they look inward to the reproduction of life, when they look inward to that womb and all that comes out of that, all that comes out of that Northern star, all of those decisions, think about it. You think about what we consider to be a great mother all of those decisions, all of those acts comport with that inward focus. When have we ever said that a woman is a great mother if she leaves her children to go fight the noble fight beyond the hill? We have never said that. 
no one would ever think something so asinine. This should all make sense now. We could talk about it again in future going free streams. We're going to be getting out of here soon because I know the great Poseidon or I hear the great Poseidon. And if somebody could check and uh, make sure that the great Poseidon is going to be streaming tonight and when he will be starting, let me know. I would appreciate that so we can get through the remainder of what we have here quickly. But I think I've made a very powerful case. I know I've made an extremely powerful case that glory rather than death is at the core of a man, uh, the core of manhood. Masculinity is glory. Think about all that the Golden One talks about uh, and how he defined, he just sent, by the way, and I'm, I will get into this. I received his book the other day. He sent me um, lovely words he put in there at the beginning of the book for me. Thank you very much. I sent him uh, Born Guilty uh, as well. Um, think about all of the things that he articulates. All of that falls into the pursuit of glory rather than this idea that death is at the core of manhood. So let's see what else we have here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. 100 Norwegian Krona. Hildebrand, Mr. Hildebrand. I haven't seen you in a long time. Nothing special to say. Just wanted to say, keep up. The good work, Jason. The truth will win in the end, and we will be glorious. The future is ours. Keep doing you, brother. Well, thank you so much, brother. I deeply appreciate that. Thank you for uh, uh, seeing you. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thank you for returning uh, to the community. I see Mary Moon is here with us. Great to see you. Red Pill Bulgaria says Poseidon is starting in five minutes. Now, is he going to be talking in five minutes? Or is it going to be that intro with all the great music and stuff that he does? If somebody could let me know. I would appreciate that. And let's make sure I didn't miss anybody's super chats. I want to get to these couple remaining things. If this is not making sense, if it being the strive for glory as the core of what it means to be a man, if that's not making sense for you, ask your question uh, or make your comment and or save it for next time if it comes to you later after we're done here today we can talk about it next time but this is how i live my life and every man out there if it's speak up in the chat in the live chat if you have felt this if you have felt your heart sing at the thought of defending your people and having that opportunity see that's one of the things that that boys and males and women they truly find inscrutable this idea that you would long to be in this, what otherwise is a horrific moment, the way one would long to, I don't know, take a, take a more so than to say, I don't know, take a cruise or to go on a vacation or to want more than anything in this world to have that opportunity. And I say again, today, it's not in the killing and dying on some battlefield. Today, the war is information war. Today, the war is rhetorical. Today it is, and it is perfectly in keeping with that ultimate sacrifice and that ultimate duty to march off into battle. Right, we do have this, I see, uh, outrageously inoffensive. So they didn't know modern art uh, was a CIA weapon. It is, we, and we, we better get to it if we're going to get to it. So let's jump over, make sure I didn't. Looks like we have a super chat from Joseph over on Cash App writing for all you do, $50. Thank you so much, my good friend. $50 investment in the cause of white well-being. I salute you. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for that kind investment. Uh, if we could, everybody, let's get a round of applause for Joseph. I think that's by far the most you've super chatted before. If I'm wrong, please forgive me, but thank you so much. That's very kind of you, Joseph. I will check the familiar alternative. Not gonna miss anybody's super chats. I also wanna check the, the backup mods. If you have noticed me miss anybody's super chats on YouTube, please let me know. I don't think any have gotten by me, but if they have, we will make sure to get them the next time we are together to mention them. So 
I want to also mention that Ash and I had a pretty spirited debate on tap the other night. I don't know if you were if you were there, you witnessed it. If not, uh, then you can watch that video. That's the latest tap that Jared George and I did. Uh, essentially, the, the debate was over whether or not females have a magical connection to spirits and the gods. I'm going to clarify some of my points on this. The first thing I want to say, though, is I absolutely, I, I know it's funny, but I absolutely did not reduce Ash to ashes. He, it was a very polite debate, and he defended his position quite ably, uh, was happy with him. We're still friends. Uh, so there was no reducing ash to ashes. Uh, but I unequivocally uh, disagree with this matriarchal magic notion. This is coming from, and, and I believe that uh, Ash said that Mamir's Bruner also holds this position. I know that there are a lot in the, not a lot, let me rephrase that. There are a, there's a certain percentage in the pagan sphere of the white positive sphere that are are feminist females and what they've done is they've just migrated over to uh, this uh, paganism and they are interpreting these these old doctrines to instill themselves with uh, this ultimate power over males and to be able to speak to be the mouth of gods to be the mouth of spirits is to infuse yourself with ultimate power indisputable power if you follow that to its logical consequence, males have to obey everything that women want them to do. And that is outrageous. It is absolutely outrageous that we have to, to subjugate ourselves, that, that, that we need to become subjects of them. But it's, it's the only thing that makes any sense because if women actually are the mouths of gods, if they have some sort of connection uh, with, with gods, then how can we deny what they have to say? How can, we de how can we refuse any whim? And ladies out there, how outrageous does that sound to you? Because you all know that you all can be really vicious to each other. So the lady on this side of the street could say the gods say X, and the lady on that side of the street would say that the gods say Y, and then the lady on this side of the street that say, well, the lady who says that the gods say Y She's actually this skank and she has men coming in and out the back door. And then the lady on the side of the street would say, well, well, this one has this STD or whatever. And it would just go back and forth. You all know that this is true. I mean, this is, this is a, a serious misreading of ancient texts. What was actually taking place? I don't mean that the, they are misreading the words that maybe Tacitus wrote about the ancient Germanic peoples or what, I don't, I don't mean that they're misreading the words. I mean, they're misunderstanding what was actually taking place. Women do not have a magical or a greater magical contact with gods or spirits. They're not the mouths of gods. I said on tap the other day that I will take uh, input from our women, advice from our women, a smart woman, as far as advice goes, et cetera, is as same as a smart man as far as advice goes. Just like a dumb woman is as useless as a dumb man as far as advice goes. So I will take input. We, and we should all take input from bright people, irrespective of whether they're male or female. But we should always object to this idea that women have some sort of magical capabilities or contact with gods. This is nonsense, in my opinion. What was actually happening in ancient times was you saw women and men uh, who, who were said to have magical capabilities. They were being used as pieces of propaganda by the rulers. So this, this tribal leader or this king or whatever, this warlord said, my rule is he or she would say that his or her rule was was meant by the gods because look at this female over here she is this sorceress she speaks for the gods and she says that this warlord's rule is legitimate and by the way she also says that that tribe over the hill that i want to conquer so that i could you know whatever the warlord wants to be wealthier or what have you she also says that the gods want that to happen as well that's what's happening 
when you see these ancient texts talking about females having access to or, or some sort of special connection to spirits or gods, you're just witnessing war propaganda and the propaganda of rulers to, to stay in control of their individual tribes or their individual warring groups or what have you. This also this idea that women and, and, it, and, it, and it is coupled with this, this idea, and we absolutely have to reject this in the white positive sphere, this idea that women are life, and, and this, this is linked without question to what came before, uh, the subject that came before, this idea that women are life is extraordinarily dangerous for us as a people. Women are not life. Women are not the givers of life. Women are the barren soil until the seed arrives. Women and men are the producers of life. That is the harmony. So this, this notion that women are the givers of life, we've got to get away from that as soon as possible. Uh, women and men are the source of life, period. There, nothing springs to life in the soil that a woman provides if the seed does not land in that soil, period. She is not, women are not the givers of, I don't know what this new, it, it seems to be growing out of this idea that, that and this misunderstanding of our ancient texts and of our ancient ways and how men and women got along at some point in the past. And you have so much that was lost in the past and you have people in the present who are injecting their own agendas into these, these scraps of information from the past and serious misunderstandings of human nature. I mean, for, for God's sakes, if you really follow the logic and you applied this idea that women have special contact to gods, then you end up with men being nothing more than the pencil pushers to carry out the will of women, the, guy, the people who lay the roads, the people who go and die. And, and otherwise, the totality of the group is ruled by the, and, and, and this is the other, I was gonna say by the sorceress, but here's the other thing. As I was talking about the, the ladies on the other side of this, across the street slandering each other, every village would be broken up that way. Every group, every family group or groups would be broken up by the women battling it out over which one had better contact with the gods. This is so childish uh, in my view of an interpretation that it's absurd. So if you all have any thoughts, please chime in. There's a word we should know too, uh, we should be talking about, and it's exorodespotism. It's a rare word, exorodespotism. But we should be using this word because it is absolutely the case all over the West today. The word means wifely tyranny. A, such a wife is an exorodespot. So we have matriarchal rule, we have oxorodespotism. Wives rule over husbands, absolutely. And we can say that as a general truth in the West because men are not standing up against the, the women in their lives. And standing up against them is not yelling at them, it's not putting them in their place or anything like this. It's saying, I'm gonna be a man I decide what it means to be a man. Men decide what it means to be a man. No woman can contribute anything to that. We decide what it means to be a man and I am going to serve that role, whether you like it or not. That's what it means to be a man and to tell her that no, you are not going to serve her as uh, some sycophant And so again, a big uh, salute to Ash uh, for the uh, the debate we had, and perhaps we can have it uh, a little a little bit more deeply in the future. This talk about this submissiveness. Okay, and now I want to finish up with why some are socially lynched, and all the work they have burnt to the ground, and others are not. And so I want to get out, I want to grab that article and look through that with you all to do that. Let's see, how are we doing for time? 
Mrs. Horror super chatting one dollars one dollar and ninety nine cents. Women are complementary. Uh, women are complementary opposites. I submit headship. Thank you very much, Miss Horst. And thank you very much for the kind super chat as well. Thank you for being here. Snow Duchess says good points. Thank you very much. Let's see what else we have as I scroll up through the chat. Heidi says women have learned to use their bodies to get what they want. It's disgraceful. It is. And it's disgraceful that men would allow uh, their desire to reproduce and to have a partner and all to to undermine what it means to be a man to undermine their duty Heidi says my advice to women is to let your men do their job and if they don't then they are not the man for you we have our place and men have theirs keep the morals amen to that very well said Seeing Red says, counsel, not leadership. Yes, women can uh, counsel uh, the, the men, absolutely. Irrespective of the sex of the person, they can absolutely counsel, counsel men. But, uh, but if you believe that women are, have some sort of magical contact with gods or spirits, if you believe that, then you better obey <laughs> you you better absolutely obey you're not getting a, bi a bit of advice from the gods through the women misty says it is gynocentrism it absolutely is gynocentrism another important word that needs to be on our lips it's this focus on uh picket small says uh poseidon's music is playing okay gotcha uh it's this uh this focus on all of the needs and wants and desires etc of the woman It's absolutely problematic. And it's because men are not being men. I can guarantee you this. If a woman, if I'm with a woman, and this has always been the case, if I'm with a woman and uh, she says, uh, no, I, your, your time has to be spent instead on uh, this thing over here or that thing over there. And it's, it's time for me to be serving white well-being. Uh, she's hitting the road. That's all there is to it. Because I'm gonna do my job as a man. She can be a woman. I'm going to be a man. I understand that she's inward looking and she wants me to just think about her needs and the immediate family's needs and all that. I, I understand that that's that she's serving the inner core of what she is, but I'm going to serve the inner core of what I am. And so ultimately the best of our women, when a man does that, when he behaves like a man, when he says, no, I'm going to do what I have to do to be a man and he turns and walks away to go do that duty, maybe to never come home again. And today, of course, that, that means going out and handing out leaflets. That might mean his face getting seen by the anti-whites. It might mean that he gets uh, in a fight with anti-whites because they attack him. You know, it, it, it might mean any of that in, in modern time. If that's what it means, she's gonna at least inwardly smile that she is with a hero even though he didn't obey her and because he didn't obey her, she's gonna inwardly smile that she's with a hero, that she's with a real man. That guy who says, yes, dear, like you all do now, all of you pathetic losers. I was just gonna use a word that I'm not allowed to use on, others are allowed to use, but I'm not allowed to use. Uh, you pathetic loser uh, that you guys out there that you are. Yes, dear, how high can I jump? They have no respect for you and they never will. All right, so we're gonna talk about this modern art and uh, try to get out of here bef before Poseidon gets too deep into his show. Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody on any super chats. Thank you all for participating, by the way. Thank you the mods as well. I don't wanna forget anybody. Thank you all for your great comments. Yes, no, cuck wasn't the word. I can say cuck. At least so far, I've been able to say that. Yeah, these cucks, these guys today, 
are just cucks. They're all just cucks. None of them are behaving like men. And we should shame them all the time. The men and women <clears throat> in our in our sphere. We should shame men when they behave like guys, when they behave like cucks, because they're not being men. Okay, I don't know if you all saw this article uh, about modern art was a CIA weapon. Actually, what we'll do, I think, is we will take a 30-second break. Excuse me. I think I'll turn off the AC, and we will come back, and we will keep rolling at that point, if that sounds good. All right, let's do this. Can everybody hear me still? I need some water, actually. I'm getting a bit parched. We're going to get into this story. And it's the re we want to talk about this because there are, there are those of us who seem to have rules applied more strictly than others. Poseidon is one, Jared George, myself, uh, Mark Collette. And uh, there are others who are able to say a lot more and get away with a lot more. And that may make you wonder. Andre, great. Thank you very much for that. Cotton says, the CIA has moved on to much scarier things. Indeed. Okay. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So the title of the article, and I will, if I, I'll put the link up if I didn't already for you all to be able to find the article. Uh, was The article's title is Modern Art Was CIA Weapon. And I, I say that it's still a weapon of the CIA. Uh, How the Spy Agency Used Unwitting Artists. It's a subtitle. <clears throat> so this is very eye-opening. This is the kind of thing that if I am, am actually first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I don't know if this is, if this is from The Guardian. So I'm going to say right now for all of the uh, anti-white uh, dirtbags over at YouTube who want to censor me for conspiracy theories or something of this nature, I'm going to say right now, to everyone listening, this may or may not be true, even though this is being claimed to be true by The Guardian and the a, a news channel uh, that is in the regime, and they'll be talking about it. Uh, this information is coming forward, but it may or may not be true, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but we are going to be discussing it here, and 
I'm just checking on the chat really quick. Okay, no, this is not over. For decades, this is the article. For decades in, in art circles, it was either a rumor or a joke. Listen, li listen carefully to how this anti-white, talentless typist delivers this information, ladies and gentlemen, just so, sort of insouciantly, sort of matter-of-factly. Yes, by the way, by the way, uh, yes, the government, and by the way, the CIA is not supposed to function inside of the United States. Can someone pull up if some <clears throat> somebody knows the the actual verbiage where it where it sh says that the CIA is not supposed it's against the law for the CIA to operate I believe it, it unless it unless of ex exceptional circumstances within the United States so this this anti-white talentless typist woman is she just kind of delivers this by the way uh, you know the the CIA of your government was uh, was actually brainwashing you all, infecting you all with anti-whiteism. That this was a big program of theirs. That they spent hundreds of millions of your dollars. But it's just you know, insouciantly, we're just gonna. It's another talentless typist. Yes, yes. Uh, so she says, uh, but now it's confirmed. Okay, for decades in art circles, listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. It was either a rumor or a joke but now it is confirmed as a fact. The Central Intelligence Agency used American modern art, including the works of artists, I'm not even gonna read their names, who cares who the hell they were, uh, used modern art as a weapon in the Cold War. Now this is the red herring. This is the pretext that the anti-whites who were working for the CIA used to implement this program. Okay, so I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk us through this. So you all will learn how to read this garbage. You all will learn how to discern the truth through the trash. All right. <clears throat> so that's the first thing. In the manner of a Renaissance prince, but it's just isn't it's a nice thing. Now, if this were reversed, she would say in, in the manner of Beelzebub, uh, you know, not in the manner of a Renaissance prince, um, except that it acted secretly. The CIA fostered and promoted American abstract expressionist painting around the world for more than 20 years. You think it's over? <laughs> think again. Uh, but maybe that's true or not true. I don't know. Because the anti-whites at YouTube will give me a strike and ban the channel if I claim that anything is fact. Uh, the connection is improbable. She types talentlessly. This was a period in the 1950s and 60s. Now, think about this for a second, ladies and gentlemen. This was the highest level of government, the most secret branch in government, infecting the population with anti-whiteism in the 1950s. Think about how many of these young people, maybe you're one of them, who are new to the cause of white well-being, and you say such silly things as, well, 10 years ago, everything was fine. It wasn't fine. We've been getting infected by the anti-whites for the totality of our lives. No one alive today has known a day of their life without anti-whiteism. That is why we're all suffering from white noir so grievously. That is why we're all so sick. That is why my job is so hard. Because I'm dealing, and you are dealing with generation after generation being infected, so infected that they think the previous level of infection was when things were good. Jesus. This was a period in the 1950s and 1960s when the great majority of Americans disliked or even despised modern art. Now, the author admits here, this was a period when the great majority of Americans despised modern art. Now, why did we despise modern art? Why? Because it is spiritual syphilis. That's why. It's not art at all. It's the expression of sick and demented minds. That is why Americans hated it. So much so that President Truman summed up the popular view when he said, quote, if that's art, then I'm a hot and tot. Okay, so 
Americans despised this stuff, but the CIA decided to infect us with it. So why? Let's 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 keep going into this. Let's keep going into this uh, article, which may or may not be true, folks at YouTube. The claims that are being made here. As for the artists themselves, again, again, this this word usually used, this word artist used on these these producers of spiritual syphilis, just despicable. Uh, the artists themselves, many were ex-communists, barely acceptable in the America of the McCarthyite era, and certainly not the sort of people normally uh, likely to receive U.S. government backing. So they're ex-communists. No, they weren't ex-communists. The we all know now when, when the Soviet Union fell, the records were opened, and we found out that virtually every single person that McCarthy said this person's a communist was actually a communist. These people weren't former communists. They were anti-white to the core. All right, but this author is trying to make it sound like it was already something in the past. They had already given up that communism thing. Why? Because the author is anti-white. The author is not telling you anything about history. The author is telling you everything you need to know about her. She is lying to you. So she's saying that the com they were uh, barely acceptable to the uh, America of McCarthyite era and certainly not the sort of people normally likely to receive U.S. government backing. Another lie. They were the exact people that were receiving government backing. They're the exact people today who are receiving government backing. Your dollars, my dollars. This is not a story of the past unless you are an idiot. Those who do not know history are condemned to repeat it. Let's continue. Why did the CIA support them? Because in the propaganda war with, now here comes the lie. Are you ready? Here comes the lie that they had to articulate at the CIA, this, this den of turds that did this to the American people. That's what these people are. And I hope when you guys are, you guys and gals who are watching this, you, you, from the CIA, you hear this, uh, you know, that's my opinion of you and uh, the, the kind of work that you all are doing. And if you're a good person uh, in the CIA, it's time to undermine their uh, the work they're doing. If you're a good person in the FBI, if you're a good person in any law enforcement, you need to be reaching out to the community and letting us know what they're planning for us. You need to be reaching out to the population and letting the population know what these demonic organizations have planned and are using against us right now. How do we not have thousands of whistleblowers for god's sake this is it's just despicable why did the cia support them because in the propaganda war with the soviet union this new artistic movement could be held up as proof of the creativity the intellectual freedom and the cultural power of the u.s russian art strapped into the communist ideological straitjacket could not compete she just undermined the lying pretext. Do you see how she just undermined the lying pretext? The Soviet Union was a barren desert for artists. There was nothing appealing for an artist in the Soviet Union. You had one style that you could produce and that was it, not any others. You did not need to create a counterbalance to this great Soviet art, to lure the artists away from the desert of Soviet-era art. You, she just revealed how much of a lie it was. So then we have to ask, and we can also easily answer, what was the real motivation of these CIA den of turds? The existence of this pol policy, well, let me make sure I didn't jump down too far. The existence of this policy, rumored and disputed for many years. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when people mentioned this in the past, they were decried as what? 
they their characters were assassinated by this den of turds what weren't, weren't they taxes uh, the 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 IRS came after them fraudulently for no crime committed whatsoever they were decried as what conspiracy theorists and it, and they were doing it the CIA was doing it the whole time it has now been confirmed for the first time by former CIA official unknown to the artists and this is important the new American art was secretly promoted under a policy known as the long leash isn't that she, she calls it the new American art it's not American art at all look up the people who produced this filth it wasn't American art at all but the important thing here to look at is that the artists didn't know that they were being used and propped up by the regime and I'm going to connect this later when we're talking about what channels get deleted, what channels don't get deleted, what platforms stay up, what platforms get detonated. Arrangements similar. This is the long leash policy. Now, folks, this is the thing. It wasn't just this syphilitic so-called art. There were virtually countless endeavors by way of the CIA and other bodies, and I don't know if this is true or not, all of these things are being claimed in the regime's media. So I don't know if you, you, if you believe the regime's media, the the uh, official media organs of the of the governments of the West. If you believe them, then you believe that these entities, all of the all the evidence is coming out that uh, there were vast programs, and this is one of them. So it says right here. American art was secretly promoted under a policy known as the long leash, arrangements similar in some ways to the uh, indirect CIA backing of the journal Encounter. The decision to include culture and art in the U.S. Cold War arsenal was taken as soon as the CIA was founded in 1947. So this organization uh, was founded with the idea that it was going to infect the population with anti-white ideas. Dismayed by the appeal communism still had for many intellectuals and artists in the West. Again, again, the desert of Soviet art. The new agency set up a division, the Propaganda Assets Inventory, which at its peak could influence more than 800 newspapers, magazines, and public information organizations. They joked that it was the uh, Wurlitzer jukebox. When the CIA pushed a button, it could hear whatever tune it wanted playing across the world. How does that sound for a free and open democracy where people get to decide on who they want to uh, rule over them? What do you think about democracy now? The next key step came in 1950 when the International Organization Division, IOD, was set up under Tom Braden. It was this office which subsidized the animated version of George Orwell's Animal Farm, which sponsored American jazz artists, opera recitals, the Boston Symphony Orchestra International Touring Program. Its agents were placed in the film industry, in publishing houses, even as travel writers for the celebrated uh, I guess it's Fooder, Fodor Guides, the Fodor Guides. And we now know it promoted America's uh, an anarchic avant-garde movement, abstract expressionism. Again, spiritual syphilis. See, and this is another thing. Look at what she writes there, telling us everything that we need to know about her. The avant-garde. For And th this is the novelty fallacy for anti-whites. It's new and therefore it's better. Now, when going free was brand new, the anti-whites would never refer to it as avant-garde, new, original, because they use the novelty fallacy. And she is using it right here with all of you. She's trying to manipulate what you think while you read the, the simpleton typist things that she has typed into 
this piece. Avant-garde. The anarchic admitting that it, it increases, and I'm going to tell you why it, it, it will really land on you at the end of this. I'm going to tell you why they push this. Initially, more open arrangements were made to support the new American art, again, the American art. In 1947, the State Department organized and paid for a touring international exhibition entitled Advancing American Art with the aim of rebutting Soviet suggestions that America was a that America was a cultural desert. What a joke. What an absolute joke of a lie. That, well, we've got to do this. We have to infect you with this spiritual syphilis, this new American art. We've got to infect you with it because the Soviets are saying that uh, there, there isn't enough uh, opportunities for artists to express themselves culturally in the U.S. Bravo, Sierra. Absolute Bravo Sierra. But the show caused outrage at home, prompting Truman. Now, also, point this, let, let me just mention again, because there are going to be some idiots that are going to say, well, the CIA, you've been reading some of this and you were talking about around the world. Of course, that includes the United States, right? At the beginning of this, we talked about Americans objecting to it because it was being pushed in America by the CIA. Now we're talking about the the show that they that they and, and there were more than just one that they sponsored to travel the United States and that the American people objected to it. The show caused outrage at home, prompting Truman to make his uh, hot and top remark and one bitter congressman to declare, quote, I am just a dumb American who pays taxes for this kind of trash. The tour had to be canceled by the CIA turds who were busily infecting this country with spiritual syphilis. The U.S. government now faced a dilemma. Now, look, look at this, what this anti-white, talentless typist writes. This Philistinism combined with Joseph McCarthy's hysterical denunciation. Oh, this woman is such a piece of garbage, such an anti-white piece of garbage. First of all, uh, uh, do you all know what Philistinism means? What was the name of the, the country? Philistia? Philistia? So it was this old uh, state or province or something where the people were said to be incredibly unintelligent uh, and had a, a violent attitude toward everything that was original and stylish and aesthetically beautiful. And uh, so these people were horribly backward and, and just otherwise brutes when it came to everything intellectual and interesting and beautiful. So she's saying that the Americans that objected to the spiritual syphilis known as abstract expressionism were Philistines. And then she says McCarthy's hysterical denunciations as though the Soviet Union didn't fall and we didn't have a look at their records to find out that all of those people were communists. So M McCarthy, so this Philistinism, you know, she, she, she says with her nose as high in the air as she can possibly get it. Uh, combined with Joseph McCarthy's hysterical denunciations of all that was, uh, again, avant-garde or unorth just merely unorthodox, take your poison, it might not be orthodox, but take your poison, was deeply embarrassing. Oh, it was deeply embarrassing. Yeah. People were, they were deeply embarrassed that the American people were healthy enough to say, this stuff is trash. It discredited the idea that America was a sophisticated, culturally rich democracy. So you get that? Do you get the, do you see the little anti-white trick there with the words? If you don't accept the spiritual uh, uh, syphilis, well, then you are discrediting the idea that America is a sophisticated, culturally rich democracy. This is how the anti-whites work. This is why I tell you, don't ever argue with them. You are dealing with consummate liars. You are dealing with consummate uh, manipulators who will argue in the same conversation, just mere minutes apart, contradictory positions, as long as they arrive at anti-white conclusions. 
The connection is not quite as odd as it might appear. As this time, the new agency, staffed mainly by Yale and Harvard graduates, many of whom collected art and wrote novels in their spare time, was a haven of liberalism. I think she means a sewer of turds where the likes of Christ piss came from. That's what she means to say. These graduates from Yale and Harvard were a toilet of turds where the likes of Christ piss came from. Uh, when compared uh, with a political world dominated by McCarthy and J. Edgar Hoover's FBI, if any official institution was in a position to celebrate the collection of Leninists, Trotskyists, uh, and heavy drinkers that made up the New York school, it was the CIA. So she gets that right. Those are the folks that composed the CIA. Those are the folks who composed the CIA today. We know those are the folks because we don't have whistleblowers from the CIA coming out to us, sneaking out with information and saying, listen, white people, I care about your destiny. And this is what these animals are doing to you. This is what they're planning for you. Not one. Until now, there has been no firsthand evidence to prove that the connection was made. But for the first time, a former case officer, Donald Jameson, has broken the silence. Yes, he says the agency saw abstract expressionism as an opportunity. And yes, it ran with it. An opportunity to infect us. Uh, regarding, quote, he says, regarding abstract expressionism, I'd love to be able to say the CIA invented it just to see what happens in New York and downtown Soho tomorrow, he joked. He'd love to say they invented that trash. But I think that what we did really was to recognize the difference. It was recognized that abstract expressionism was the kind of art that made socialist realism look even more stylized and more rigid and confined than it was. And that relationship was exploited in some of the exhibitions. So there is more of your lying pretext. Soviet art was, yes, it was a barren wasteland where you couldn't express yourself, but it wasn't a barren wasteland enough. We needed to allow people, we needed to fund people to create Christ piss exhibits and then pay for them to go around the country. And you'll see here in a moment, we needed to be several uh, uh, spots removed from these artists so they wouldn't know that we were paying for the whole thing and ensuring their success the entire time. The population wouldn't know that we were that we were the ones hyping them up that we were the ones aggrandizing them so that we could make soviet art look even worse than it already did bravo sierra quote in a way our understanding was helped more because moscow in those days was vicious in its den denunciation of any kind of nonconformity in its own rigid patterns and so one could quite adequately and accurately reason that anything they criticized that much and that heavy-handedly was worth support one way or another. So he's he's admitting there that there, there was no creativity in Soviet Russia. So there was no need to allow people to have free reign to create the sickest garbage and then to force that into the minds of white men and women and children across the West. No need for it whatsoever. The claim that Soviet art was, was the reason why you had to infect the entire white population of the West with spiritual syphilis uh, and make them all sp uh, infected with that disease, that that's the reason is abundantly absurd. To pursue its underground interest in America's lefty avant-garde, you mean anti-white, uh, retrograde, uh, the CIA had to be sure its patronage could not be discovered. Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Quote, matters of this sort 
could only have been done at two or three removes, Mr. Jameson explained, so that there wouldn't be any question of having to clear Jackson Pollock, for example, or do anything that would involve these people in the organization. And it couldn't have been any closer because most of them were people who had very little respect for the government. And of course, they had little respect for the government because they hate white people in particular, and certainly none for the CIA. If you had to use people who considered themselves one way or another to be closer to Moscow than to Washington, well, so much the better, perhaps. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, they were colluding. The anti-whites in the streets and the anti-whites in government were colluding. They were working together against you. That's what that just said. Now, I don't know if that's true or not for the censors at YouTube. That's what this Mr. Jameson from the CIA just said. This was the long leash. The centerpiece of the CIA campaign became the, became the Congress for Cultural Freedom, a vast jamboree of intellectuals. Listen to that, ladies and gentlemen, writers, historians, poets, and artists, which set out to poison you all with anti-whiteism, all of your grandparents and great-grandparents and parents, and now you set up in the 1950s and run by the CIA. It was the beachhead from which culture could be defended. You mean infected. At its height, it had offices in 35 countries and published more than two dozen magazines, including Encounter. The Congress for Cultural Freedom also gave the CIA the ideal front to promote its covert interest in abstract expressionism. It would be the official sponsor of touring exhibitions. Its magazines would provide useful platforms for critics favorable to the new American painting. And no one, the artists included, would be any wiser. You see, none of you all knew. You all were kept in the dark. And when some of you came out and said, hey, look at what is happening here, these turds set about to destroy your career, your lives, your standing in the community, your reputation, and you were right the whole time. No one was any wiser. Now they say it with a bit of a giggle, but you're gonna find out as I read the next, I skimmed this, but I caught a couple of these gems. This wasn't just a program for these turds at the CIA. This is what they love. They are, are anti-white. This organization put together several exhibitions of abstract expressionism during the 1950s. One of the most significant, the New American Painting, visited every big European city 50, through 58 and 59. Other influential shows included modern art in the United States, modern art in the United States, and masterpieces of the 20th century. Because abstract expressionism was expensive to move around and exhibit, millionaires and museums were called into play. Rest assured, there were plenty of folks, anti-whites, with plenty of money to make sure that all of us across the West were infected with anti-whiteism. Preeminent among these was Nelson Rockefeller. Now, interesting that she would choose only that name. I wonder I wonder if there were other groups of people with very different last names that she didn't mention. Hmm. Rockefeller was an anti-white, though. As president of what he called, quote, Mummy's Museum, Rockefeller was one of the biggest backers of abstract expressionism, which he called free enterprise painting. His museum was contracted to the Congress for Cultural Freedom to organize and curate most of its important art shows. The museum was also linked to the CIA by several other uh, bridges. William Paley, the president of CBS Broadcasting and a founder of the CIA, sat on the members board of the museum's international program. John Whitney, who had served in the agency's wartime predecessor, the OSS, was its chairman. And Tom Braden, first chief of the CIA's International Organization Division, his name is returning here, was executive secretary of the museum in 49. Funny how it's all so incestuous among all these anti-white bastards, isn't it? All of these bastards in the governments of the West, these multi-millionaire billionaires and trillionaires of today, and it was all just incestuous. Now, in his 80s, Mr. Braden lives in Woodbridge, Virginia. Listen to this. Very close to where I live, ladies and gentlemen. Not far away at all in Northern Virginia. Now, this is 
I, I told you, this is not just a program. These animals were running against you, destroying Western civilization. Mr. Braden, now in his 80s, lives in Woodbridge, Virginia, in a house packed with abstract expressionist works. Packed with abstract expressionist works. So it was not, it was not a policy to undermine the great lure of that desert of Soviet art that choked the life right out of all creativity. Bravo, Sierra. What an obvious pretext. His house is packed with this filth. He is as anti-white as they come. And he used his power, his influence, and he worked for these rich anti-whites to bring all of that infection to every one of us. He lives now in his 80s. I hope he spends all his money on lawyers and doctors. What a horrible wretch of a human being. He explained the purpose of the IOD. Quote, we wanted to unite all the people who were writers, who were musicians, who were artists, to demonstrate that the West and the United States was devoted to freedom of expression and to intellectual achievement. This is all the lie, ladies and gentlemen, without any rigid barriers as to what you must write and what you must say and what you must do and what you must paint, which was what was going on in the Soviet Union. So if that was going on in the Soviet Union, then any freedom was better than the Soviet Union. You did not need to create and sponsor and push piss Christ, did you? No, any free expression. You could have endorsed and sponsored any culturally enriching art, artistic movement, writers, poets. They, they pushed it all, ladies and gentlemen. And then they also ran the magazines that told you what to think. The critics, they controlled the critics that told you how wonderful this garbage was. I think it was the most important division that the agency had. And I think that it played an enormous role in the Cold War. It played no role in the Cold War, but it played a significant role in destroying Western civilization. You could have sponsored a renaissance of the renaissance. You could have pushed for a new renaissance. That is what you could have pushed across the West. You could have encouraged artists to make new Sistine chapels better than they were made in the past. No, you infected us with spiritual syphilis. These, these syphilitic ideas. He confirmed that his division had acted secretly because of the public hostility to the avant-garde. So again, instead of it being that the public is right, that it's actually a sickness that you were trying to push on us and we don't want any part of it. And the public, why can't the people decide what they want to consume? No, we had to keep it secret because the public were hostile to what we were trying to infect them with. So we kept it a big secret. That's one of the reasons it, the campaign there, had to be done covertly. It had to be done secret. In order to encourage openness, we had to be secret. So in order to encourage, op listen to that, uh, the phraseology there. The spiritual syphilis. In order to encourage openness, we had to be secret. We had to poison you in secret. We had to destroy the people who realized what we were doing. If this meant playing Pope to this century's Michelangelo's, well, all the better. How despicable that they would associate these monsters with Michelangelo. It takes a Pope or somebody with a lot of money to recognize art and to support it, Mr. Braden said. And after many centuries, people say, oh, look, the Sistine Chapel, the most beautiful creation on earth. And still nobody is saying that who hasn't been poisoned by you all. Nobody says that about this 
uh, modern uh, art. Nobody says that. Nobody says, oh, look, it's the equivalent of the Sistine Chapel. We still say it's garbage. Would abstract, and then this is back to the anti-white author. Would abstract expressionism have been the dominant art movement of the post-war years without this patronage? No, it absolutely would not. She just said over and over how hostile, she just was recounting the news over and over about how hostile the public was to this filth, right? She was just said over and over, even she's saying it. And then she says here, would abstract expressionism have been, and this is how she wraps up the article. She, she wants to leave you with this final thought because she's an anti-white lying bastard. Would abstract expressionism have been the dominant art movement of the post-war years without this patronage? The answer is probably yes. No, the answer is absolutely no. Equally, it would be wrong to suggest that when you look at an abstract expressionist painting, you are being duped by the CIA. No, you are absolutely being duped. You have been told, and you're still being told, that you're looking at something interesting and creative, and that there's something in that garbage other than garbage. That when your spirit looks at it, you see nothing but filth, but that's because there's something wrong with you. If you want to be with it, then you have to read what, what these uh, critics are saying about it, and then repeat what they say. But look where this art ended up in the marble halls of banks, in airports, in city halls, boardrooms, and great galleries. For the cold warriors who promoted them, these paintings were a logo, a signature for their culture and system, which they wanted to display everywhere that counted. They succeeded. That's how she ends the piece, ladies and gentlemen. They absolutely did succeed. And they did so with your dollars. They did so lying to you. They did so by holding contradictory positions. They did so by way of deception. They did so by way of stabbing you in the back. They still do so today by deception and lying. She just said, as I pointed out, that the public despised it and, and yet said, oh, it still would have been in, embraced as this wonderful art when the obvious that it would not have uh, been the case is just proof of another lie that uh, this anti-white writer is making. So this is what I want to say. The anti-whites teach people what to think. The reason why they decided to push abstract art first was because when you look at it, there's nothing there. It's garbage. Everything associated, everything either even tangentially related that has come from this school of so-called art, this syphilitic nonsense, everything that has come from it, when you look at it, there's nothing there to see but sickness. Art expresses itself across the totality of human emotion. And it does so in a way that speaks to our soul. It harmonizes with who and what we are. We have defined it because it is ours when we create it. They made it into something quite different. They wanted you to look at something that was very ugly because everyone could create something that was ugly because it deprived you of something special in your life because beauty is a virtue as important as truth and justice. And if they could rob beauty from you, they could deprive you of a significant element of who and what you are. They could rob you of a harmony that fed back to you from our civilization, what we, by way of our biospirit, fed into our civilizations. That's exactly what they did by pushing, foisting this garbage on you as something that had value and merit. And then they told you what to think about it. So you wouldn't come to the accurate conclusions that it was garbage, that it undermined who and what we are. That by removing beauty, you were one step closer to removing truth and justice from our civilization. But the other reason they, they pushed this garbage on you was for the celebrities they made out of those who created the garbage. Because they know very well, as do all of the anti-whites who push and produce celebrities for you to worship now, 
that it is virtually impossible for someone to embrace the works of a celebrity and yet hate the celebrity, hate everything that the celebrity stands for. No, in fact, the opposite is true. You embrace what the celebrity thinks. You embrace what the celebrity stands for because that is how you get a little bit closer to that thing that you have been taught to love and cherish. The thing that you have been taught to look up and I look up to look up at and idolize. So when they pushed these different wretched anti-white cretins onto the masses and their creations of filth, white Americans adopted not only the filth they produced as something valuable, but they then said, what does that artist think? What are the opinions that he holds? And the CIA and all of the other anti-whites and the news and entertainment media were only too happy to provide you with what the person's opinions were on race, with what the opin person's opinions were on society, with what the person's opinions are on Western civilization, with what the person's opinions are on what needed to be done. And then you and the rest of the Western civilization parroted that filth. And then you put it into practice. That is why the anti-whites at the CIA pushed this filth. It had nothing to do with the dearth of expression in Soviet Russia. They didn't adorn every wall in their homes with the garbage that they wanted to produce to undermine the dearth of creativity in Russia because it was some program. They decorated their houses with it because they relish in the sickness of anti-whitism. Just like people put up flags for their sport teams. The same damn reason is why these so-called intellectuals, these pseudo-intellectuals adorn their homes in this filth. And they pushed it on all of you. They pushed it on your great-grandparents and on your grandparents and on your parents. And it has all come down to you with such power that you think 10 years ago was the good years. That is what the anti-whites did. And now how does that connect to today? As we're going to be wrapping up with your final comments and super chats so we can go over to watch Poseidon. I assume he's talking now. How does that relate to today with, say, YouTube? With who gets demonetized? Who gets kicked off of the platform? Who has platforms taken from them? Who has their channels taken from them? Why are they taken? Why are others promoted? They don't know any more than these artists know. And you are no more closer than the public was in the 1950s from understanding how big institutions are two or three removes or four removes from the outcome that they are teaching you to think and believe by way of the content producers that they throttle and the content producers that they trumpet. They don't like no white guilt because no white guilt gives you a dialectic and a lexicon that will free you of their anti-whiteism. So every word I say, they're hanging on. I have to say that even the stuff said by their regime's media might or might not be true because they will censor me for a conspiracy theory if I don't. They hate Poseidon and censor him because he's creating culture and community and laughter in the midst of the anti-white attacks. They censor Jared George because he is creating art and culture. Others you will find, ladies and gentlemen, will be trumpeted. They will be allowed to talk. They won't know why they're allowed to talk. You won't be able to make the connection from point A to B to C to content producer, but you'll see the fruits. Some will be allowed to even name the names that others are not allowed to name, the groups that others are not allowed to name. Sometimes it'll have to do with the fact that their channel is too small to be relevant. But other times, it'll be because that person is also saying something that the anti-whites want you to hear desperately. So it comes down to are the things that are being produced and allowed to reach you, do they help or hinder the anti-whites? I, in everything I'm doing, everything Jared George is doing, Poseidon is doing, hinders 
the anti-whites in their endeavors. If, for example, you say, or a content producer is able to say, there's no hope, there's no way that we can win. If a content producer is saying that this is going to take centuries, there's nothing that you can do, that content producer is going to be allowed to even name the groups that other people are not allowed to name so that you will go and watch them, so that his or her audience will grow tremendously. Because at the end of the day, the conclusion is that there is nothing you can do. He or she will always say, at the end of the day, there's nothing that can be done. And the anti-whites want that message to reach you. I know you're hating this, folks at Homeland Defense and CIA and FBI. I know you're hating that I'm telling people this. Too damn bad. That is why such people, so don't be faked. Don't be tricked. When content producers are able to say the, this conspiracy theory and that, and able to name this or that group, able to say things that you know that if no white guilt said them or Jared George or Poseidon said it, that we would be gone. Don't run over there to hear what they have to say because your minds are going to be poisoned by the, the pills of the defeatism, the fatalism that they're selling. They don't need to know that they're being permitted to talk because the anti-whites like their outcome. They're being trained just like an animal is trained with a clicker. Do you know that, ladies and gentlemen? When, when vets are often being trained, now I, because I'm an animal lover, I'm often around uh, people who train animals, who care for animals, who doctor animals, very often as a test, they're taken to, as part of their training for education, they are presented with this scenario where they have toys in front of them and the there's a person with a clicker and they're expected to do X, Y, or Z, but no oral communication, no written communication. And it's the, the what the trainer is trying to train the human to do is extremely complicated so that the person can't readily figure it out. But very slowly, by way of the clickings, how many clicks, et cetera, they begin to figure out that maybe this toy gets picked up and it's a good thing or, or what have you. You are being trained just like a dog and you don't know it. They are training you to have a fatalist mindset. They are training you to believe that you can't win. They are training you to go to content producers that will poison your mind with such ideas. They are training you to go to content producers that will tell you the only thing you can do is to go like a craven and burrow into the ground and not resist what's happening. Is this making some sense? They are training you, leaving content producers in place to say things that people like me would be instantly deleted for saying to go to those channels and to go to those blogs, to go to those websites and to read that the only option now is some sort of violent option so that you then go out and do something idiotic that can do nothing good for our well-being, that can serve in no way to recapture our destiny, but will unequivocally harm everything that we are trying to do here for white well-being. They are training you like dogs, and you don't know it, but you do now. So when you hear these other content producers talking about violence, when you hear them talking about how there's nothing you can do but hide in a hill like a craven, when you hear them able to talk about conspiracy theories and able to talk about, make predictions uh, 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 and talk about specific groups, Talk about superiority and inferiority of different races. When you hear people able to get away with that sort of thing, look for that poison in this in the in the the medicine that they're giving you, in the in the meal that they're giving you. You know, when it comes to rat poison, only a speck of it is actually poison. The rest is just something that smells and tastes deliciously to the to the rat. Look for that speck of poison in the message that they're sharing. And if you look, you'll learn to see it. It's probably going to be, there's no hope. 
There's nothing you can do. Come here for the laughs. Come here because for some reason, I'm able to get away with saying X, Y, or Z on YouTube and nothing happens. I don't get it. But you have no hope. Just surrender. Don't let these bastards, at the, these anti-white bastards at the CIA or whatever organization is out there now, that 50 years from now, some piece of evidence will come out and there won't be enough white people to care about anymore if we don't recapture our destinies. Don't let them train you like a dog, like they trained your great grandparents and grandparents. If you have any of this, and any of this so-called, this syphilitic art that they have, if you have any of that, set it on fire and videotape it and say why you're setting it on fire, that it's anti-white filth, and then post that on the internet and tell the people what I'm telling you now, that they need to keep their eyes open for the current programs that the CIA and others are running against you and our well-being. Let's see what we have here. Super chats. Zero Talon, seven, super chatted $5. Only familiar alternative. Thank you very much for that kind super chat, my good friend. I assume that the Great Poseidon is already up and running, uh, but if somebody could just verify that for me and we will wrap up and I will get something to eat and then jump into the audience over there. We'll all go over there as one. Let's see what you all have to say. I see you all are excuse me, already naming some people uh, who you think might be being used, unbeknownst to them, by the anti-whites to poison us. Very good. Let's see, any questions or statements that anybody wants me to read? I'm just scanning through here now. Outrageously inoffensive rights. I've heard content producers say the West or certain Western countries can't win. Then they have the gall to ask for donations. Uh, yeah, exactly. You watch. Anyone who says, this is my prediction, and you all can come back to me. It, it, it will confirm. Absolutely, a 100, 100 times over. Anyone who's saying that we cannot win or that the only recourse is violence or that you should hide in a, in a hole in the ground We'll be able to say things that people like me and Poseidon and Jared won't be able to say without being kicked off of our platforms instantly. It is like Pavlov's dogs. Who, who said that? Andre said that. Very well said. Yes, there were there were thousands of employees in the employee that were part of this and still part of this. Uh, that I don't know whether it's happening or not. According to the mainstream media, it is. I believe whatever YouTube tells me to believe. Okay, L. Ronder says, you, uh, Poseidon is streaming. All right. Uh, outrageously inoffensive says, no sound on Poseidon's YouTube stream. I wonder if there was just a hiccup. Uh, eternalism, yes. The print is uh, asking about the print behind me is a white pawn, and at its feet is a black king. Not black as in the people black. It's just a demonstration, and you can see the fire all around the, the chessboard in the piece. You can see the fire also is reflected inside of the pawn's own head. This is metaphorical for the battle that we have to fight internally against our meme pathogens and the battle outside of us and also a great optimism that even as small as we are you and i we can take down the biggest anti-whites we can take down anti-whiteism as powerful as it seems today represented in this case by the black king has nothing to do with black people thank you eternalism for asking the question 
Tree of Wisdom says, Renaissance art uplifts the soul. It does indeed. We should have more. We should have a new renaissance in, in, in the white positive sphere. In the movement for white well-being, we, our artists, should create a new renaissance. We should create the beauty that harmonizes with our people's soul. Because we understand the bio spirit. We understand how this resonance will draw our people to us. That's one of the reasons why, again, that we see our artists with, without even having any words in their pieces, they are uh, kicked off of YouTube. Not saying a word, they're kicked off of YouTube. But others can talk about committing violence and they stay, burrowing into the ground they stay, that there's no hope and they can talk about any uh, group any anything they want they can say anything they want and they're not kicked off uh, YouTube It should make sense now I see philosophic ad has just shown up as we are just getting ready to wrap up But it's great to see you a great and uh, dear friend Wonderful to see you in the chat you'll have to you have to go back and listen to what I believe is the core of of what it means to be a man, which is the glory, the pursuit of glory, the ineffable glory that that is lies beyond us. And let me see, okay, I think we have, I don't think we've missed any super chats. Let me jump over here. Kurt Russell on Entropy. I see a lot of good folks over on Entropy today. Wonderful to see you all over here. Kurt Russell. Super chatting $10. Thank you so very much, Kurt. Starts by writing most of the West hated modern art, then suggests the Soviets would be jealous. How does that work? Exactly. I mean, this is, this is, th this is, we have a wonderful community. We have a brilliant community. You all get it. This is, this is why we are head and shoulders beyond the rest of the white positive sphere over here in Going Free, serving white well being. We see the anti-white propaganda for what it is, and we can speak to it. We have Heidi super chatting again, $5. Thank you very much, my dear lady. Where did women forget their true power and authority, having babies and raising their children to be men and women for their people? Where did it turn to fool those around them, fooling themselves? Very well written. Thank you for that, Heidi. Yes. Oh, uh, Pamela had super chatted, super chatted one dollar. I want to make sure I have the the spelling right, and I think I have it right when I wrote it down. So let me see if I can find that. Thank you very much, though, for the kind super chat, Pamela, a great hero in our community. I've got to see the word to make sure that I have it. Okay. Oxoro despotism is spelled U X O R O D E S P O T I S M. Oxoro despotism. U X O R O D E S P O T I S M. Thank you very much, Pamela, for that. There were probably others who wanted to know. How to spell that word, Oxoro Despot, of course, is you'll be able to figure that out. <laughs> um, there are probably others who wanted to know how to spell that word. That word really should enter our vocabulary because it does speak to a reality, regrettably, in, I don't know, 95% of uh, white households across the West. The man is a cuck and the woman dominates. So let's see what else we have here over on... Entropy. I see that tall Kevin super chatted at some point, $3. Great show as usual. Any advice for someone who needs a little motivation to be a better man and kick some bad habits? Absolutely. You want to start by creating a contradictory habit. 
And this is how we go free. By the way, this is how you heal all habits, ladies and gentlemen. Create a contradictory habit. Start small, whatever that habit might be. Stick with it consciously for as long as you can, and then you will discover that the new behavior will become your new habit. That will be your new zero, your new ground zero. And then you build off of that. Now, if you're talking about and you keep moving in the right direction, also be ready to forgive yourself for errors. We are human beings and you will make errors. So make sure that you're able to forgive yourself. But then immediately, the forgiveness means that you immediately get right back into the game, consciously controlling your behavior. And if you're talking about being a man, this is something that might not be able to be trained into a guy. It might be something that can that that can be there naturally and muted and destroyed and choked out of existence, but not given to a man who can't hear that voice. So if you have never felt the slightest inclination to and never felt in your heart that that singing to be able to fight for your people in a, especially in a struggle where you might not return if you've never felt that at all as a male it probably doesn't exist in you that's just a reality but if you have felt it even if it's been slight then give it your attention nurture that flame just like you would nurture a spark in a fire give it breath give it life literally breathe the fire into that spark into that kindling and watch it grow that will lead to the behavior of a man in all things that you do it will enable you to understand to know intuitively what a man would do that is how you become a man that is how we need to train our boys to become men in the future they need to listen for that voice and they need to heed it when it comes. There is nothing more poignant for a man, and all the men can vouch for me, and nothing more inscrutable to a woman than when that clarion voice beckons us to the defense of our people, to the struggle for glory and heroism, and especially so when the odds are against us. Now more than ever, our men need to rise as men and reignite those fires. And guys out there, if you don't have, if you can't feel the fire in you yet, if it's not bright enough for you yet, if it's not hot enough for you yet, I've got plenty to go around. We will make this happen. We have DL super chatting $5. When are you going to do a stream, another stream, on health and losing weight? And what carbs do you consume? Well, we'll probably do another health and wellness stream in uh, the coming month. Uh, Carbs-wise, very few carbs, almost zero simple carbs, uh, because it's just they're just bad for you. And bottom line, they're, they're not serving you well at all. Uh, don't a lot of ladies make this 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 error of eating carbs and watching the calories in the carbs. Those carbs are going to become fat if you don't use them. So you need to stay away from the carbs. Now, things like uh, I, I have some potatoes, uh, for example, uh, as, as, as a form of complex carbs, salads as well, some car- carbs that by, by way of salads, but uh, mainly it's protein your body will always use all of the protein so stick with that and we'll talk more about it i don't know your specific case we'll have we're going to start doing call-in shows and the anti-whites are not going to stop us we're on 10 platforms right now hello to everyone on all of the different platforms Uh, the anti-whites are not going to stop us and so we'll be taking calls and we'll talk to everyone's uh, issues because health is going to be one of the primary places that you have to go free and you will the faster lose that weight get into better shape by going free in your mind 
of meme pathogens. All of that is holding you back. My Thark just super chatted five Canadian dollars. Thank you, my good friend over on Entropy. Thanks for the stream, Mr. Kuna. For the fellow who asked about habits, I recommend listening to Atomic Habits by James Clear. Audiobook is here on SensorTube. Well, there you go. Thank you very much for that. Let's see. I just saw the text jump. Let's see if we have any other questions over here. And then we are going to be jumping off here and seeing if, if you have any final questions, tag me or super chat them or statements. Do it now because we're going to be signing off to see Poseidon and what he's up to. I'm sure it's going to be an enlivening uh, uh, live stream. Uh, uh, Mary says her blood group is recess factor negative, went to a, a meeting with like-minded people and uh, some of them had recess factor negative asking if there could be a pattern. Perhaps that could be something we could explore in the future. Thank you for posing the question. Ah, the chat just jumped again. Okay. Let me jump back over here. Sendicide says exactly and many other ailments. Yeah, precisely. These the anti-whiteism, uh, the mean pathogens that are inside of you are undermining, are making you sick on every level. Stress, you just ask your doctor what stress does to you. It engenders disease, it exacerbates disease, it undermines, it restricts the, the mean pathogens. Now jumping back over to the concept of just mean pathogens generally, they restrict your thought, they undermine what you think you can accomplish in life. Trust in that. How many times have doctors and uh, people who, who claim to be professionals of various types told you that what you think you are capable of is all you'll ever be capable of? That's true. And you do not know that you are capable of the works of our greatest artists, of the works of our greatest healers, of the works of our greatest scientists, our greatest adventurers. You don't know that that blood runs through your veins, that it is in your spirit because you have been denied it, because you are infected with mean pathogens that say that you are no better, in fact, you're a little bit worse than everybody else on the planet. Everybody's the same, but the non-whites are a little bit better in every area. That's what you have learned your whole life. You need to shed yourself of these things if you're ever going to reach your potentials. If you're ever going to be able to know how high in that sky you can soar, no matter what the area is, that you pursue. And also, if you didn't, uh, th uh, you're, you're most welcome uh, for the stream. Arnorian, thank you so much for saying that. Uh, happy word, thanks for another great show. You're most welcome. Thank you for being here. A quick jump around as I say the final comments to make sure I didn't miss anybody on Super Chats. Thank you so much for being here. Platinum, thank you for being here. So a uh, tree of wisdom, right? Some women believe that you need to worship them like pagan goddesses. If you want a wife and children, they need to learn. Uh, right. Oxorcide is, is that how you pronounce it? Oxorcide. Maiden says, but more carbs needed versus say your diet is diet. If you do a lot of cardio. Correct. The, the more activity you do, the, the more carbs you can eat. But don't eat the carbs to be able to do activity. Eat protein. Your body can, use, can burn the protein for your energy. And right, yeah, if you, if you don't do anything and you're chowing on carbs, it's just going to turn to fat. All right, so it looks like we have all of the Super Chats over there, all of the Super Chats there. And over here, looks like the same. Okay, very good. Seeing Red, thank you again for a stellar show and profound information. Godspeed, brother. Godspeed to you. Thank you so much. Did you, did, uh, El Ronder is asking, did I watch in the years to come on White Art Collective Channel? No, I haven't. 
please do tell people to watch this beautiful uh, music art piece. I will. Please watch it, everybody. And also, if you're in the mood for a laugh, uh, and this is the exact reason why I wanted to introduce this, this book to the white positive sphere right now, we have uh, a lot of attacks going on, a lot of censorship uh, going on. This is a book that I authored. It's pure comedy. The video is up on No White Guilt, where I introduced this book to the white positive sphere. If you haven't seen it, jump over there and watch it. It will take just a couple minutes to watch. It'll be a bit of fun. And uh, if you want to laugh, this is also available electronically. The link, in fact, I think is to the electronic. Check it out. Eventually, this will be available uh, from No White Guilt Collectibles, and I'll be able to get people signed copies if they want them. But folks, it has been an absolute honor to go free today with all of you. Let me just reposition myself. Remember that the anti-whites are never resting. They are demonic in their pursuit to inflict harm on us and our civilization. Never give them a moment to pursue that objective while you passively sit there being trained like Pavlov's dog, like we had mentioned in the chat. Don't allow them to train you like a dog. Don't allow them to lead you down these dark alleys with what otherwise seem like innocuous uh, channels, innocuous stories, innocuous, etc. Know the anti-whites for what they're creating and what you are being poisoned with. And most importantly, today, the message I wanna leave with you all that is that for those of you out there who are guys, become a man if you're not already one. Reach into yourself, kindle that fire. Know what it's like to hear that voice that reaches out to you from beyond you, that beckons you to do a thing that might cost you your life, that in today's realm, the, our world today, doesn't ask you to do anything that grave. In today's world of verbal, Arg arguing, whether it's orally or in writing, and today's propaganda warfare, information war that asks you to keep your uh, efforts and all of your acts in line with that supreme objective that wells your eyes with tears and makes your heart sing for that moment, as mine does when I'm asked or when I put the question to myself of what would be the one day if, if I could live in all of the history of the earth would be that moment with Leonidas and the 300, one day, knowing I would die there, but it would be for the good of my people. If that can well tears in your eyes, or you think you can hear that song now calling to you for such a sacrifice, kindle those flames and then go out into the community, find yourself a wife. If, if there's a woman out there that will have you, it's not the only thing you have to do. Plenty of us will go unmarried. Plenty of us will go without children because of the poisoning. But if you can find yourself a wife after hearing that voice, produce a proud white family, behave like a man. Let's do what it takes to take back our destiny. Let's be men. And when women are serving their inner purpose, inward looking, and they tell you, don't go, no, don't do it, because their focus is on them, her immediate self, the protection of the children, the protection of the home, when she does that, understand it for what it is, that she is serving her inner purpose, her deepest core essence of what it is to be a woman, that we as men can understand it, but nor can she understand the deepest core purpose of who and what we are as men. And then tell her with all the love that you can muster in your heart and in your eyes, no, I'm going to go be a man. I'm going to defend our people. Let's go free.